Can everybody hear me? I can. Yes. So, my first try at this, see how it goes. It's a good luck for you. <laughs> Thanks, I need it. It's so weird sitting in here and there's like no chairs out there. Two more meetings. Mm -hmm. Two more meetings and we'll all be back there. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. It is uh, 7.30 right now, p.m. I'm going to call the regular meeting of City Council on June 14th, 2021 to order. Uh, Mayor Grastein will not be here tonight, obviously, that's why I'm sitting here. Um, and I will be chairing the meeting for the first time. Uh, Hello? City Clerk? Yep. Please take Councilman, over. are you ready? Councilman Bliss? Uh, I'm here remotely in Haywood County, North Carolina. <laughs> okay. Councilwoman Clark? Here remotely in Madison Heights, Oakland County, Michigan. Councilman Corbett? Here remotely in Madison Heights, Michigan, Oakland County. Councilman Gettings? Here remotely in Madison Heights, Oakland County, Michigan. Councilor Rohrbach? I'm here remotely in Madison Heights, Oakland County. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? I am here also remotely Madison Heights, Oakland County, Michigan. And Mayor Grafstein. Okay. Here. Uh, I just want to first add that uh, Mr. Bliss, I'm glad to see he's here tonight um, remotely. Um, unfortunate circumstances, we as a, had a family wake, uh, but uh, thank you for your dedication, sir. Uh, would someone like to make a motion um, to excuse council, excuse me, um, the mayor, Grafstein? Mayor, your honor. honor. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Gettings? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to excuse the mayor from this meeting tonight. Is there a second? Your Honor, support. Mr. Corbett, a second. So we have a motion to approve and a second to excuse Mayor Grafstein. Uh, can you please take a roll call? Councilman Bliss. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Councilman Gettings. Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? Yes. Uh, so it passes. Um, okay, next is uh, invocation from Councilman Gettings. Um, he will uh, be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance too. Mr. Gettings? Yes, sir. We thank God for having given us the opportunity to meet here today. And we ask humbly for a blessing of our gathering. Brighten our eyes with greater understanding. Enrich our hearts with compassion and courage. And gain, excuse me, and receive our gratitude for this opportunity of fellowship. Also, may it look down upon us tonight to make sure we make good uh, decisions for everyone involved across the board. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Giddings. Can you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, if you sir. Can, please stand. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, 
indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do, do we have any uh, additions or deletions to agenda this evening? Seeing that there's none, we'll move on to presentations. Tonight we have three presentations. Uh, the first designated June 19th, 2021 as Juneteenth in the city and two others to designate the month uh, of June as Pride, excuse me, Pride and Men's Health Month. City Manager Marsh, do you have a report please for these three proclamations? Yes, I have proclamations for each if you would like for me to read them, but the um, Human Relations and Equity Commission requests that City Council proclaim June the 19th as Juneteenth and temporarily re rename Civic Center Park as Emancipation Park on June the 19th only. And like I said, I have a proclamation kind of explaining, maybe I should read that kind of explaining what Juneteenth is because there has been some questions um, that I've seen on social media. So. Whereas Juneteenth commemorates the traditional observance of the day of end of slavery in the United States and is observed annually on June the 19th. Whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, declaring the slaves in Confederate territory free, paving the way for the passing of the 13th Amendment, which formerly abolished slavery in the United States of America. And whereas word about the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was delayed more than two years in reaching African Americans at the South and the Southwestern United States, when on June 19, 1865, Union Major Granger announced in Galveston, Texas, that slavery had been abolished. And whereas the following year, the first official Juneteenth celebration took place in Texas and have continued across the United States throughout the years. And whereas Emancipation Day observations are held on different days in different states and other parts of the nation. And whereas on June the 19th, in the city of Madison Heights, will take place in Civic Center Park on June the 19th, that's this upcoming Saturday, and temporarily rename Civic Center Park the Emancipation Park for the day. Now, for, now therefore, the mayor and the city council hereby declare June the 19th as Juneteenth in the city of Madison Heights and urge all citizens to become more aware of the significance of the celebration in African-American history and in the heritage of our nation and city. Thank you, city manager. Um, I'm really glad. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say I'm really glad uh, the city of Madison Heights is taking the lead on this and uh, designating these three proclamations this month. So we'll move on to public hearings. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight. Point of order. Yeah, we have yes. we have two more. We have P two and P three that I haven't read yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was part when you cut out. No, I was still on one. But um, so P2 is the proclamation to designate June as Pride Month. The Human Relations and Equity Commission is requesting that the city of Madison Heights recognizes the month of June as LGBTQIA Pride Month and strive to protect the rights of our LGBTQIA residents. Um, the Human Relations Commission is also requesting that June be designated as Men's Health Month in recognition that men need to go get their annual health screenings. And just a reminder that that always doesn't um, take place. Thank you. Your Honor. Yes. Uh, um, do, that's me. Councilor Warbeck. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, do we need to make a, a motion to rename Men, uh, Civic Center Park Emancipation Park at this time? For the Juneteenth celebration, is it? Do we I need think to we're make moving it. About that? If I'm not correctly, city manager. Is, I'm sorry. I don't think that you need a formal motion. It's included in the proclamation that council okay. is accepting by my reading, and you're not objecting to it. It's being accepted. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public hearings. We have no public hearings. Um, items. Got one more, Mr. Mayor. You got uh, P3, I think, or 
I'm confused. No. Yeah, she did read all three. Of them. Okay, you and me. So the, the men's month was a little bit shorter, but uh, she did read that. So, all right, we'll go. Uh, meetings open to the public. Um, do we have any ideas to move forward on the agenda? Um, seeing if none, uh, we will move to a meeting to open to the public. We have several uh, members here that want to speak. There's a whole bunch. Uh, there's also a clerk has received several comments uh, to read. So we will call on everyone. I will do my best. Uh, we're going, to, however, we're going to start with a statement from our police chief, uh, Haynes, regarding the animal shelter operations. Uh, then the clerk, um, read the statements uh, that she received. Um, and then I'll, I'll try and call on uh, everybody I can that I see wants to speak. Mr. Haynes, the floor is yours. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Soltis and members of council. Thank you for allowing me a few moments this evening to address an issue you have been contacted about regarding the animal shelter. <laughs> Recently, the city manager and I made the operational decision to suspend the use of animal shelter volunteers and utilize our full-time animal control officer, our two part-time animal shelter assistants, and hire a third part-time animal shelter assistant as well. There are several reasons we made this decision. Some of those reasons are as follows. The first two are mainly related to COVID. First, since the beginning of COVID-19, the number of animals housed at the animal shelter has been greatly reduced. Currently, the shelter only has two dogs, is equipped to give these animals all the love and attention that they need. Second, during the height of the pandemic, volunteers were removed from the shelter for their health and safety. And the shelter has operated without the use of volunteers. The animal shelter continues to operate during this time and has done exceptionally well. All of the animals continue to be well cared for and adoptions have continued seamlessly. The third reason is volunteer liability. The full-time ACO and the part-time animal shelter assistants are covered under the city's liability insurance. However, volunteers cannot be covered under that insurance and must ultimately sign off on liability waivers before even being allowed to volunteer at the animal shelter. This can cause many issues and force the volunteers to have to use their insurance or be responsible for medical bills should they be injured in any way while volunteering at the animal shelter. Fourth, over the years, the volunteer staff has grown to approximately 40 volunteers, which is extremely difficult for one ACO to balance and still take care of his or her assigned tasks. This was obviously a very tough decision to make, and we sincerely appreciate all the efforts put forth by our volunteers over the years. We are in the current process of planning recognition for these volunteers very soon, whether that is a proclamation from our city council or something different. There have also been several complaints brought to council's, intention, uh, council's attention regarding the animal shelter. All of these complaints have been thoroughly investigated, including interviewing the two part-time animal shelter assistants. While most of those have found no wrongdoing, I have worked with the animal control officer on better communication skills, additional training, and more supervisory skills. While we greatly appreciate the former shelter volunteers and plan to formally recognize their service, the city manager and I fully support our animal control officer, our part-time assistants, and the shelter operations in general, and believe the current course of action best meets the city's needs at this particular time. Thank you again for the opportunity to address you this evening. Thank you, Chief Haynes. Okay, so I'm going to go in the order that I see, uh, but I will call Clerk on everyone that has their hand up. The clerk's first, right? Yeah. Yeah, the city clerk has five or six to read. Thank you. I have a lot. Okay. Um, these are in no particular order. The first one is from Andrew Bilak. It says, as a tax paying homeowner of the city, I vote no to, the, to fly the pride flag. This is from Brian Magzig. Hello and good evening. I'm writing simply to show my support for the Madison Heights to fly the pride flag during pride month. If not permanently, we speak of inclusion in, in community and this, it is time we show it as a city. Do something positive, wave that flag, wave it wide and high, thank you. This is from Heather 
Marchese, a resident as a resident of Madison Heights. My wife and I have always felt accepted at our home on Diesling from our neighbors as well as our superiors in the city council. I feel in my heart that we should all know and trust that it's okay to celebrate a major milestone to where and what we have become as a city, as well as tremendous support from the community. I love Madison Heights and it would mean the world to us to hit and have the honor to have your support as well as recognizing pride for all by flying the beautiful colors of the rainbow for our LGBTQ family. This would be very much appreciated. Happy Pride Month, Heather and Tina Marshish. This is from Jenny Day. In December, 2020, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation published a guide called Dismantling a Culture of Violence, stating, quote, nearly three in four transgender and gender non-conforming youth hear their family make negative remarks about LGBTQ people. Over half of the transgender youth say they have been mocked by their family for their identity. 40% of homeless youth are LGBTQ. We must take action to ensure transgender and gender non-conforming people of all ages are accepted by their families and safe in their own homes. As a born and raised Michigander, I can tell you these remarks are quite true. We've all experienced this, have we not? For some form, in some form or fashion. Hearing people we know mock and make fun of lifestyles they don't understand, it colored your perception of the world, even of yourself. Since the time I was small and until now, I'm almost 40, I've learned much about human biology as it relates to reproduction, sexuality, psychology, and sociology. I studied a lot for a long time. I asked questions because quite frankly, I was suicidal for a long time for being queer. For those of you who aren't familiar, the term queer is an umbrella term. We no longer find it as an insult unless you really mean it that way. And instead of use it to cover many identities, I use it as an identifier for myself, but not everyone does. I decided to be stronger than hate. I decided to be stronger than ignorance and prejudice. I decided to be the person I needed when I was younger. Visibility matters, but some days my social anxiety is so bad, I literally can't even go to the store because I'm emotionally unable to deal with the people looking at me because of their rules about body hair, as one example. But I'm me and I'm beautiful and I'm out and I won't be, in, in, and I always won't be to someone and that's okay. I know this, but some young kids out there don't yet. Some kids out there won't survive like I have, but some kids might get to see me shopping one day and feel a little less alone, a little less afraid, and maybe they'll live another day. Even at 40, I feel a little better knowing that there's someone else like me around. All kids out there deserve to know there's nothing wrong with them. God made them and loves them the way they are. If they don't feel loved by their family, there's a chosen family waiting for them out there who will love them or already do for who they are. None of us have any control over our bodies develop or how we feel about that development, how we will feel about love or intimacy. Think of the most intimate moments you ever had with someone you care for deeply. Imagine being told you can't or shouldn't ever experience that because someone else doesn't get it. It's silly, right? Human biology, friends, is more complex than you know. After a trans friend of mine from college killed himself, I started reading. I didn't understand gender fully. It took about 20 years to unpack my sexuality and unlearn the misinformation society shoves down our throats. Took another decade or so to wrap my head around trans issues. I'm very queer and I'm very, very trans and it took me nearly four years to understand it all. The modern world really only just started talking about these issues so everyone else has little catching up to do in the research. And the, at the end of the day, no human is wrong for loving another consenting adult. The science supports a vast array of ways to be human. That's a technical term. Bill Nye, the science guy, recently did a cool thing about it. You should check it out. I conclude by saying it takes a lot of work to learn all the ways our com complicated hum humanity transverses the moving global spectrum of colors and labels we've been mining to understand the human condition. And we're at the very beginning. Like my autistic son, the more knowledge we have regarding the element of our hum humanity and the more beneficial life can be for all people in all societies. In the beginning, we need everyone's help to boost the signal of love, acceptance, and understanding until it can gain enough momentum to stand on its own. Our signal in Madison Heights right now is the pride flag. There's a kid in this town who needs to know we love them, less so than we do. Let's educate, don't hate. Let's move forward to peace, to progress. Thank you, JD, Michigan residents, 1981. Madison Heights residents of 2008. Okay, the next one's from Arla Bern Bernazzi. Dear Madison Heights City Council, it makes me sad that our community has to vote to fly the pride flag that helps support our LGBTQ plus community. To me, this should be something we automatically do. We should wanna honor and support all neighbors. We should want people to recognize that Madison Heights welcomes all people. The city of progress should represent the progress we have made to love all people regardless of their backgrounds and sexual orientations. I vote to fly the pride flag, love all neighbors, support all neighbors. Thank you. 
The next one is from Kelsey Rabin, Dear City Council. I wanted to express my absolute enthusiasm and support to please, please vote in favor of flying the LG BTQ plus pride flag. I am queer, married to a wonderful woman and a member of the Madison Heights community. Having the flag represented during the month of June would help make our Madison Heights community feel more inclusive and welcoming. It may seem minor, but it's a sign in representation and representation that we are a city of inclusive values. And as the world has this representat representation more openly available, the more people change their opinions and hearts are to be welcoming too. Voting against this measure would truly feel like a slap in the face and lead me to reevaluate if this is a city community we should continue to be part of. Since buying our home, I have told relatives and friends looking for their next home that Madison Heights should be on their radar. I could not in good faith continue promoting the city we live in or desire to continue living here, the city council voted towards intolerance. Thank you for your time. And I hope you you vote with the people of our community in mind. The next one is from Heidi Gray. Hi, my name is Heidi, I'm sorry, Heidi Grogan. And I'm emailing to support flying the pride flag for pride month. Um, this one is from Kathy Patterson Erickson and Ralph Erickson. My husband and I vote yes, please on flying the rainbow flag, letting all know that we're inclusive and diverse city. This is from Miranda Maris. Hello, I cannot make tonight's city council meeting. I would like my comments read below. I wish to share my support of flying the pride flag to support our LGBTQIA plus neighbors. During pride month, I want to see our city live up to its motto, the city of progress by showing that we are an inclusive community. This is from Heather Aldridge. Thank you for all the diligent work that you do on behalf of our residents. I'm ready to ask that the city council adopt a policy that facilitates raising the prog progress pride flag in Madison Heights during the month of June as an act of solidarity with our neighboring cities and is a statement that Madison Heights supports and avails equity for all its citizens. Silence is complicity and this is our opportunity for the city of Madison Heights to raise its voice on the right side of history. Thank you for your consideration on this matter. This is from Richard Lenski. I don't believe any. I don't believe any flag except the U.S. flag, state flag, and city flag to fly above City Hall. This would stop all the fighting. No one is better than anyone else. Richard Lenski. This is not. This does not have a name associated with it. I don't believe any flag except the U.S. flag, state flag, and city flag to fly above City Hall. No one is better than anyone else. This is from Melissa McNabb. Good afternoon. I may not be able to attend the meeting tonight, but I wanted to make sure to let you know, I believe it's important that the city lets pride flag, lets a pride flag soar high. I live in the city 30 of my 42 years on this earth. My husband and I have been homeowners here for just two years ago, uh, here just two years ago after living in Ferndale for 10 plus years. This is the first time I felt proud of my city and recognizing pride month and something as simple, but is also hugely symbolic is flying a flag embodies the city of progress motto. We must let our LGBTIQ plus members that we see them and that we stand alongside them and they are an important part of our community. Thank you so much. Okay, this is from Gloria Moore. Um, I wish to submit something for the next meeting. Kim Clark has been using her private Facebook account to conduct city business. If she wanted a personal private Facebook account for her personal life, there is no problem. I have yet to see city councilwoman public I have yet to see city councilwoman public account for her. She is using her private Facebook account to con as a conduit of city business, such as notifications of city events, et cetera. Along with others, I've been blocked. I've never messed with her account, so there is no reason for the block. Over the years, lots of city council people have had two or more Facebook accounts, usually one of them for their election and another is a regular private account, but don't block anyone. I'm not sure what is happening on other social media. No one would have noticed except she blocked a portion of residents, voters, anything city business she does online gets missed. We also gained, she also gained control of what used to be public pages, supposedly still public and part of the people and part of the people blocked for disagreeing with her. Thank you for listening. This is from Michelle Kelly. I have been a Madison Heights resident for 18 years and I am a law enforcement officer. I have never had an issue with a neighbor or felt unsafe in my home until recently. The city created multiple commissions with the goal of creating a cohesive community. In theory, these commissions would be beneficial to the community, but unfortunately, I do not see this to be the case. In fact, I'm seeing a divide growing within the city and it's disturbing. I would like to discuss members of the Human Relations and Equity Commission and City Council. This, 
the Human Relations and Equity Commission was established to advise the City Council on programs, policies, and activities that promote human relations and equitable outcomes in all aspects of the community life, of community life including issues related to or affecting minority communities within Madison Heights, to monitor policies and practices of the Madison Heights, of the City of Madison Heights, with respect to fair and equitable application. If this commission was created to promote relations and equitable outcomes in all aspects of the community, why are Councilwoman Kim Clark and Sean Force using language that is offensive to citizens and a group that is part of the community? I have viewed numerous posts on Facebook that involved offensive language specifically from Councilwoman Clark and Sean Force referring to these citizen groups as neo-Nazis or white supremacists, which I find very offensive and inappropriate from appointed members. Unfortunately, Facebook has become an outlet to complain and berate individuals based on differing views. There are many Facebook groups that have been created within the city, which unfortunately involve a lot of inappropriate name calling, censoring and blocking of individuals. I try to ignore these comments, do not participate in the name calling, and I very rarely post on these pages. But at this point, I'm feeling uncomfortable and unwelcome in the city based on my race and occupation. Councilwoman Clark is an appointed member should not be allowed to refer to the mayor as a racist at a public forum, nor should she be using offensive language towards the citizens of Madison Heights. City Council should re re represent all citizens regardless of race and affiliation. At this point, I feel Councilwoman Clark has an agenda and that is not representative of all citizens of Madison Heights. I've enjoyed many events held within the city of Madison Heights and have never experienced any issue at these events. When I see posts about the Fourth Reich Motorcycle Club causing issues at the events and not being welcome, it is disturbing. I have seen this club numerous times at events and have never seen them create disturbance. In fact, I have stood with the members as I have a close friend that is married to a member and I did not feel threatened or uncomfortable and I did not observe any behavior that was inappropriate from the members. How long are citizens going to have to sit back and be subjected to the appointed members abusing their appointments to fulfill their own agenda? When do we begin to feel safe in our neighbors? In our, in our neighbors, Michelle Kelly. All right, this is from Linda Coulter. I would like to say that I appreciate and respect their mayor. I am becoming concerned about the way the cert, that certain council and commission members behave. Commissions that are creating to improve Commissions that are created to improve the city seem to focus entirely on negativity with a preconceived bias that, the, that is far left leaning politically. I want our city to be balanced and fair. If the council has the ability to censor its members, I would like some action taken against members who name call and denigrate city residents without any proof. Members of any commission who accuse others of being, an, being Nazis, for example, should be removed from the commission. This is name calling with no attitude of re reconciliation. I have limp I have limited the time I spent on various city Facebook pages because of all the strife presented. However, I have recently read about the gay pride flag question. I would prefer that no flag be flown other than our American Stars and Stripes. That great flag stands for freedom for all. No other flag is needed on city property as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for reading my letter, Linda Coulter. All right, this is from Robert Wilkinson. The last city council meeting was shocked and saddened when a certain councilwoman called the mayor racist. Asking questions about the HREC or any other committee is far from racist. The term gets used so often that I doubt people know what real racism looks like. Madison Heights has always been a very welcoming community with all races, sexual preferences, or any other group in our city. In fact, if you disagree on one of the councilwoman's Facebook pages pertaining to the city, you get silenced. God forbid you have a differing opinion. There is a Madison Heights anti-racist Facebook page that is private. Wouldn't the admin want this public so that there is a real race issue? So if there is a real race issue in our city, we could come together to help end this. Shame on that councilwoman and she should apologize to the mayor. It seems that there are certain groups in the city that are actually causing issues where there have never been any, causing division and mistrust. I will repeat, Madison Heights has never been a racist city. Mayor, I have one other one that I don't seem to have with me. I'm gonna look it up in my email. And if you wanna go on, I'll just do it at the very end, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are going to open this uh, meeting up to the public. So please keep three minutes uh, in mind. Uh, that's usually the limit. I'm not going to necessarily track it, but, you know, um, just on the honor system. So I'm going to go in order of how they appear. Um, so don't, you know, I'll get, I'll get to everybody. So there's uh, Tina Addox. Has her hand up. Hello, Mayor. 
Mm -hmm. So it is. Hi. Floor Are you ready? Yours. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Tina Maddox. I live at 943 East Rowland, Madison Heights. The division in the city is getting ridiculous, especially when it's huffed along by our Councilwoman Clark on her Facebook for Activist page. Taught as triggering content, content to create a response. It's time to make a change for her seat on council because what it is doing is creating a divide. This also includes Commissioner Sean Forrest of our HREC. What a great example they are in public. But the screenshots of the private comments from they and their followers are pretty scary in the Madison Heights anti-racist coalition page that Sean Force admins. They sound pretty racist and biased. According to Sean, some white people have a lot to learn. What their groups are doing and saying are the ways and methods of Antifa. They dox people, they push people to disown them, pressure bosses to fire them, They've done it with sponsors of the FRMC in the past. They harassed and called local businesses. They've also called their bosses. They even did it to my own company. This is encouraged and it is appalling. Speaking out today causes a great concern to the safety of my home, my family, and my personal business because they and the people aligned with them have made private group comments that the city and citizens need to be made aware of. This is not hearsay. I put packets together for all of you, just some of the screenshots these people are saying and doing. Money pays the bills, puts food in our stomachs and a roof over our heads. I won't deny any business unless I can't do the work. Now, because I and others in the community have defended the motorcycle club, Kim Clark has taken to silencing us on the Friends of Madison Heights page, the largest group, because she's an admin, because we don't align with her narrative. I have never harassed or stated anything that wasn't true. And I am tired of being called a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer. As should my, you and many others. All while being an elected official posting and using the city name on a Facebook group she blocks people from. When it comes from elected officials and commissioners of our city, a line must be, dressed, must be drawn somewhere. These people have no place on our councils and boards. Everyone to them is into white supremacy, which includes our police, our government, and DHS, just to name a few. But Antifa methods are apparently okay. All along, they know nothing of me, my family, or its diversity. I will not be silent about this anymore. And I'm hoping the others in the community are no longer afraid to speak up against them either. But if we're all going to get labeled, then so should they, just to be fair. So the citizens of Madison Heights, look for these screenshots coming to a public forum on a Facebook page near you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Jennifer Zamarsnik. You did it. You did it. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Soltis. I have three topics, I'll be very quick. Government flags. Flying flags from non-governmental organizations for causes to educate or make awareness would be a violation of rights as a taxpayer, resident, and person. Taxes are required to pay for municipal government uses that maintain rule of law, functional utilities, and public safety. Flags raised for causes may infringe on free speech because those not supporting the cause would be disenfranchised or discriminated against. It is my desire to keep governmental flags flying that are with official agencies only and not flags for causes that have no government agency connection. If they are flown, it implies or suggests that the government sanctions the ideology, such as the church getting sanctioned from the state to fly its flag. Ideology is defined as a personal opinion and should not be part of municipal services. Lawsuits are inevitable with this risk, according to our city manager who spoke at the HRIC meeting last week after she sought legal counsel. Topic two, mayor racist comment. The last city council meeting showed a city council member intimidating our mayor, suggesting and questioning whether a budget question was racist. There was no point of order from anyone to stop this behavior, so it continued. And the, and the several organizations waiting for grant approval had to sacrifice two more weeks to wait for their funding due to the tension created by this unprofessional and intimidating comment. 
I request a formal censure to be made to the council member for making an accusation towards our mayor that is unfounded as our mayor was following procedure in asking about how funding use was being implemented. Third topic, censorship. Please read this case law when you get a chance. Davison versus Plowman. Two weeks ago, I was blocked by a city council member on her personal page, which means I cannot see any posts she creates for public consumption relating to the city. Said council member posts 90% of her city activity on her personal page, which is then forwarded and shared to other forums she has admin control over, which I am also blocked and unable to view. When I review our city of Madison Heights Facebook page or other commission board pages, I cannot see anything from the city council member due to the block. I have already been disenfranchised as well as voter suppression from voting my, from voicing my opinion to the city council member on the forums she promotes as community connection as well as city funded social media. I'm asking for an agenda item and legal counsel input for council on social media censorship that will be applicable in any forum of social media for elected officials and city hires to me to be made a permanent amendment in our city charter. Thank you, Your Honor, Pro Tem Mayor Pro Tem Saltis. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, now we're going to, all I have is uh, the name, first name, Martha. Good evening, Mr. Saltis. Good evening. And Council. I'm here to share my opinion and views of what happened with members of the HREC after the um, appointment of the Crime Commission. These members were involved in outright name calling, calling two of the appointees Nazis. How is that acceptable for members of the HREC when they're supposed to be providing um, relation, human relations and, equality, and equity? This is not what they're doing. These are bullying and slanderous comments. They're not helpful. I want it noted that nothing has been done but bring hate and division to this city since Ms. Clark has filled her council seat. We were, we were a city of good and helpful neighbors that never had problems like this. We worked together, a city that cared. Since she's posted, she's the vaccination to the disease in our city. I would like her to know that no ma'am, we are the vaccination to you being a disease in our city. We will not let you and your progressive ways take our city from us. We have fought too long and too hard for our city. Her ideologies and behavior are those unbecoming a council member, let alone a commissioner in the HREC. She has broken her oath of office with her inappropriate and non nonpartisan platforms. She is not nonpartisan. That is very well known. And last meeting with in the HREC, she was literally playing with a slinky, being distracted, talking to people outside of the, excuse me, outside of the viewing screen, which she's not even paying attention when public people are speaking and giving their opinions. She doesn't care as long as it does, if it doesn't fit her narrative. And I really think that it's time for her and the other council members, or excuse me, her and the other member of the HREC to be removed from HREC and put people in that really want to bring our community back to what it was. We are Madison mm -hmm. Heights, the city of progress. We are not the city of progressives. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, uh, the team's kind of cut off, but it's uh, Miss Wayna. Yes. So, um, good Good evening. Please, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. Um, so I am the parent of an 11 year old who identifies as non-binary. I wanted to come tonight to let you folks know that Lana is brilliant, incredible, kind, inclusive, empathetic, and has an electric personality. They are the kind of kid who is undoubtedly gonna change our world. When my child was born living in St. Clair Shores, and I told my husband that we had to move back to my hometown of Madison Heights because I did not wanna raise my child anywhere else. I grew up in this community and the Heights is by far one of the most inclusive, forward-thinking and progressive places I know. Our city slogan of City of Progress isn't just lip service, it's an actual reality. In a world that is on the precipice of a great many amazing changes, I want Madison Heights to continue to lead the way to show other cities what it truly means to value its residents. I want Madison Heights to be a place where people of all races, ethnicities, creeds, religions, sexualities, genders, 
levels of ability, all people can feel safe, included, and valued. I'd like to ask you council members to consider a very important step towards being that place. For the month of June, I'd like to see our city, city hall raise a rainbow pride flag and show support for our community's LGBTQ plus residents. This will publicly show that Madison Heights is the safe and accepting community I have grown to know it to be. Please consider what raising this flag will mean to my child and other children who are looking around themselves for places to feel welcomed and included and how they will feel knowing that they are truly valued here. Thank you. Thank you. We, I think we have seven more left, but next is uh, Ms. Emma Green. Good morning, council, or good afternoon, I guess. Uh, my name is Emma Green. My address is 1583 Westbrook. I'm so glad to be here today um, because it was this body of government that helped me recognize June as LGBTQ Pride Month in 2018, something that was a monumental step towards equity and equality in the city. As a queer person who has struggled so hard to find leadership because of the lack of elders in our community due to the AIDS crisis, discrimination, suicide rates, and all of the other things that make it so hard to be queer. It has been hard paving a road for myself and for others like me in the city. And I'm so grateful for the help that the city council has provided in previous years. For that reason, I wanna ask city council to continue this next step by officially raising the LGBTQ plus pride flag this year, showing not only on the paper that we've already been recognizing for years that we're supportive of the LGBTQ plus community that lives in our city, but by showing it publicly, a symbol of pride, quite literally, for every member of our community, regardless of their sexual orientation, gender identity. Thank you so much for this consideration. And thank you so much for all that you have already done to recognize the LGBTQ plus community and the struggles that we have faced. Thank you. Uh, next is Dawn Clayton. The floor is yours. So sorry about that. A little bit of technical difficulty. My name is Dawn Clayton. I live at uh, 27327 Dartmouth in Madison Heights. I've lived here for over 30 years and I'm a registered voter. Um, I am here tonight to support uh, the return of volunteers to the animal shelter. And I just wanted to let you know, I did uh, volunteer for over five years. And I just want to give you a quote from Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is uh, Dan, Dan, I'm sorry, Dana or Danny. What is that? I'm sorry. Yeah, you can call me Danny. Uh, Danny. Thank you for recognizing me. My name is Danielle Patterson. I'm a Madison Heights resident. I reside at 26386 Spicer Street. Thanks again for the opportunity to speak tonight. I volunteered at Madison Heights Animal Control for two years. I've been an animal lover and have volunteered successfully with other animal welfare groups over the years. It became apparent immediately when I started that A.C. O'Holland was not competent in his role as an animal control officer and leadership of such a gifted volunteer team. I observed it quickly that there was, I'm sorry? Uh, okay. No, wait, that's so, go ahead. Okay. Um, I also observed quickly that there was a culture of cronyism and censorship in place at the shelter that made many of my dedicated volunteer cohorts very uncomfortable to bring items of concern up to ACO Holland. I began to voice concerns that I knew were shared among the volunteers on our private volunteer Facebook page, because frankly, I don't care if I'm the squeaky wheel. I just wanna see improvements and growth made, uh, only to have ACO Holland ignore them and two uh, volunteer supporters virtually bully me, calling me uh, and my concerns that are justified nothing but unnecessary drama. The day after my last concern was raised, ACO Holland implemented a Facebook post review protocol citing a magical new city policy. It was at that time I escalated my concerns to the chief of police. I requested 15 minutes of the chief's time on January 12th. Following multiple follow-up 
request to him and an escalation to the city manager that was completely ignored, I had a brief Zoom meeting with the chief on March 24. On April 6, the chief sent, as a result of my complaints and our Zoom meeting, a form letter via email, which I later found out was the exact replica that he sent to other two complainants. It did not address a single concern I brought to his attention. I'm gonna give you a couple, but I have plenty. Animals in pain being left in the shelter unvetted for a completely unreasonable length of time. Adoptable animals growing old in cages. A complete lack of culture of accountability and public service in place. I believe the culture of cronyism, censorship, and non-response to this is indicative of a systematic dysfunction in our city leadership. It should not take months to get minutes on a city employee's calendar. When city leadership determines it's easier to disband an experienced, passionate, and free team, instead of addressing our valid concerns, we have major problems and changes need to be made. If we have a person in city leadership who is not competent, passionate, or able to lead in any capacity after years on our payroll, changes need to be made. And by changes, I do not mean attempting to silence the group of volunteers on their concerns, questions, and continuing to move forward with the mediocre at best status quo. We as residents and the our animals deserve way more than the mediocre effort. I wanna take just a second to acknowledge the chief's comments and to speak to them. COVID did not change the need for animal control and shelters. If nothing else, it's increased the need. I would ask the city council to do research with other organizations in the area. These animals are still out there and need to be cared for. What has changed is that there's no volunteers to bring um, you know, insight and acknowledgement to get these animals cared for. Um, how many liability claims has been filed by volunteers? Because I'm not aware of a single one, not a single one. And we all sign that release of liability before we come on board. I, the chief mentioned over 40 volunteers on staff. It is my knowledge based on a hired city assistant that that dwindled to less than 15 under ACO Holland's oversight. Um, I have also submitted a FOIA request to see what efforts and investigation the chief did. The only thing I received from that FOIA request was a copy of all of our email correspondence and two other complainants. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address you. I look forward to every single meeting uh, until we can get something resolved and improved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next we have Jeff Hilliard. Hilliard. Yep. Hey, good, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem. This is uh, Jeff Hilliard. Uh, I'm 29091 Sherry. Uh, I identify as only an American. Uh, and first, I'd like to say happy birthday to the United States Army, the world's protector of freedom. Fly our American flag and stay in your lane. Regardless, I'm sorry. Regarding the events here in the city, I'd like to say that I found it outrageous in the last meeting that the council member would treat another with such disdain and throw out attacking words toward another's intent in asking questions of a commission, allowing that commission to brag and talk about all that they're doing. Instead, they seem to stumble in their response and turn the response into an attack, which made pretty much the rest of the meeting pretty uncomfortable. You know, my question is where was the, at least one response from anybody that was sitting at that table at that time? This is not pressing the envelope. It's not change is uncomfortable. It's not making people uncomfortable, but simply disrespectful and unbecoming. This behavior continues in much that is happening uh, in the city outside of the council as well which has given the public the impression that the city is divided and not represented all the time by all the members. Input and ideas not welcomed, along with predetermined outcomes and decisions. The HREC, a great commission, I think it was well supported, um, have mistaken its human, itself as a human rights organization 
instead of a human relations team. This has nothing to do, any of these comments have nothing to do with Juneteenth pride, uh, but more so a set of members nominated by a single member with a specific view on what the task at hand is or would be before that task was even written by council and voted on. Identifying and celebrating the broad diversity, many cultures we have had and will have in our city, celebrating everyone in every culture is never a bad thing here in the city. I'd ask you stand up council, demand more from yourselves and each other. Intimidation and bullying cannot be allowed to influence your thoughts, your votes, and must be pushed back uh, against from within. Thank you for your service to the community. I recommend that members get back to answering emails from citizens, meeting in chambers, having office days or, or maybe just office hours and put a code of conduct in place. I know I mentioned this last year at the beginning of COVID, uh, our city employees have a code of conduct. They have rules of behavior in which they are to conduct themselves both on and off the clock. We know who this is. And here's just a couple bullets that really stood out to me in all that I've heard this evening. Lift every voice but yours. Raise all flags except for X, Y, and Z. City government, stay in your lane. You cannot lift others up by dragging someone else down. City of Progress is also a community of compassion. Thank you for the time. Thank you for listening. Have a great evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll go on to Christina. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Christina Sandifer, and I was a volunteer for the City of Madison Heights Animal Shelter for two years. The volunteers were told we were being put on a hiatus due to COVID. This was not long after a formal complaint started being submitted to the chief regarding the operations of this, the shelter and the mistreatment of the animals. Um, at that point, the governor was also opening up parts of Michigan. Um, we were then blindsided on May 27th with the chief's decision to end the volunteer program at the shelter. The volunteer program is an integral part of the success of the shelter. Not only do we assist or um, do the day-to-day -day care for the animals, but we also do the medical transporting, uh, fostering, all of the fundraising is from the volunteers. Um, we assist with the social interaction. We have people of all ages that devote their time. Um, you know, the volunteers at the shelter, we're not there to work a shift. This is not a job to us. We are there because we genuinely care and love the animals as if they were our own. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, from the time I started volunteering at the shelter, there's always been a lack of communication from ACO Holland pertaining to the knowledge and care of the animals. When former shelter assistant Julie was um, on staff, she handled the questions and comments and concerns that came through to the volunteer page. ACO Holland rarely, rarely did. Uh, once Julie resigned as the shelter assistant, I noticed a steady decline in the lack of urgency in the care of the animals that we had at the shelter. For one example, which I have many, um, was a cat named Skittles that came in as a stray. He had an obvious head injury, but yet he sat in the cage for six days before going to see a vet. Um, there were several times even that ACO Holland left the back door to the shelter wide open for entry where anyone or any animal could come through where the dogs were located. There was no lock, it was wide open. And I do have pictures to show this as well. Um, the concerns by the volunteers ended up resulting in censorship of our private Facebook group where only the volunteers were present. Multiple concerns regarding ACO Holland have been brought to the attention of the chief to which they were dismissed. Um, I reached out to the mayor, the city manager, Chief Haynes, and also copied all of you city council members. It took over a week for the mayor to get back to me and not only did it take over a week for her to acknowledge my email, but she only did so because on a Facebook post, someone had tagged her and I had mentioned that I was still awaiting a response. The next morning, I received a response. Um, I hope that we can work together to do what is in the best interest of the animals. And that definitely is reinstating the volunteer program at the shelter. 
I fear the lack of communication and knowledge from ACO Holland is dangerous and concerning not only for the animals, but also the potential adopters not knowing the animals and, and putting them into homes. Um, I also wanted to mention one more thing before I end. And, um, you know, I did hear the chief saying that there was only a few animals at the shelter right now. I was there in the middle of COVID when we had 18 cats or kittens and four to five dogs at one time. So I appreciate you all listening to my concerns and I hope that we can work together to do what's best for the city of Madison Heights and that is reinstating the volunteer program. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is I own partial name, Cindy Prindle. Cindy? One once, twice. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Um, Mr. Saeed Murtaza, you're next, sir. How's it going? I live in South Madison Heights. Um, it's June 14th. We're 14 days into Pride Month, and we are currently discussing whether or not we should be putting up a flag in support of our neighbors. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, clearly, if you've heard the public comments, love triumphs hate. Um, so I think that should speak for itself. Um, I'm very excited for Juneteenth coming up, so I hope to see everyone at that. And also, I hope that everyone comes out to the Be Love Garden at United Methodist Church with uh, created with a giant group of neighbors, including the Madison Heights Mutual Aid. Um, and so come check that out, come sign up to water and come pick some fresh fruits and vegetables when we're ready to harvest, thanks. Thank you. Next, I just have a first name, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Hi, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, go ahead. Hi, I'm, so I'm a resident of Madison Heights. Um, I, I feel pretty conflicted about what exactly to say tonight, but um, after listening to a lot of the comments, I, I will just say that Madison Heights has a not so secret history of tolerating and even supporting white supremacy. Um, the city really does not feel safe for many, including my own family. Um, which is why it's so important for the city council and the mayor and city leaders to stand up to racism. So I really ask the mayor and the city council to, to seek out education about institutional and systemic racism and how we continue uh, those issues. Um, it's, it's really important as your role of, of city leaders is to protect those who feel marginalized. And it's, it's almost scary speaking during open comment because I feel like me and my family will be targeted. Secondly, I wanna say that I'm really proud of all of the work that HREC is doing and their ability to, to coordinate and fund this historic Juneteenth celebration. It's really incredible to see the work they've done and they deserve the full support of our city leaders, um, especially the mayor and the city council. The targeted criticisms of the HREC, the last city council meeting by the mayor was sickening. Um, this clearly was fanning the flames of racism in our city, creating unnecessary tension. Um, there are plenty of boards in our city and commissions in our city that don't do much, but that's not the HREC. And, and finally, I think the city should take a stance and, and try to be more inclusive and, and everyone should, should vote in support of, of, of the pride flag, raising that in front of the city. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Mr. Quinn, right? Go ahead, sir. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Awesome. I am very excited to talk today. I, my name is Quinn Wright, and I am the chairman of the Human Relations and Equity Commission. And I am so glad that so many people decided to speak up today because it highlights the exact reason why the Human Relations and Equity Commission needs to exist in the city, because it has a culture of white supremacy, which is embedded deep within the roots of the fabric of this city. And it is amazing and almost astonishing to see how folks who have lived here their entire life don't see it. When people who have only lived here a week can see it. And it's also saddening as somebody who is passionate about helping the city to progress forward to see how easily people don't recognize their own racism. There are people who have proudly on this call spoke out against how they've been treated, but at the same time did not denounce racism, did not denounce prejudice, did not say that they were not racist and that they did not support things, but they told you what other people didn't do. And it is 
so seeping through the pores of the city that we as a community need to recognize our racism. Racism isn't always overt. It's not always calling someone the N-word. Sometimes it is in a question that you ask. A question can be racist. A policy can be racist. A way that you conduct your business by, say, the ways in which you allow some people to look at houses can be racist. Racism isn't always just an overt name that you call someone. It's in your actions. It's in the way in which you say things to the community. It's the way in which you feel so moved for example, for, to call out folks on the commission of the Human Relations and Equity Committee to scrutinize the words when we all know what we're here for is human rights. It's very disturbing to me as a member of this community that the racism is so embedded, the prejudice, the bigotry is so embedded in our community that some folks, they can't say that they're prejudiced, but they don't mind being prejudiced. That's a problem for me. And that's a problem that I think we as a community need to address. We need to understand what it means to also deal with our own quirks. Um, you know, one of the things that they talk about when it comes to psychology is ways for you to focus. It's okay if you're in a meeting, if you play with a pipe cleaner, if you have something in your hand, because neurologically what it allows you to do is listen more to what people are saying. So the way in which members are nitpicked for their actions here, the way in which the things that the HREC is nitpicked for little things when we're trying to make a tangible difference is incredibly frustrating. And it honestly all boils back to white supremacy, which apparently should be highlighted today as a bigger problem in the city than we know. I'm not saying people are outside wearing big swastikas, but I'm saying they do have signs up that we can see. We do hear code talk. We know what you mean when you say, well, I don't like this. We know what you mean when you make comments about me indirectly. Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. And it is not right for city council to, uh, to hear these things. And I don't want to point a finger at city council. I just want to say this. We just, we need to recognize that there's a big problem. And I'm not saying that it's a big problem like there is this, this grand um, division, but racism is something that has existed in this country before the start of Madison Heights as a city, but you can either be racist or anti-racist. And it's clear that a lot of folks here have not recognized their racism or that they're not anti-racist. Now, granted, they might not have big signs in front of their, their lawn, but they need to understand that racism runs deep in this country, deeper than the, the beginning of this city. And I just wanna encourage us to like keep a level head and keep a level mind, an uh, open mind and an open heart to what prejudice and bigotry look like. Just because things are okay for you doesn't mean they're okay for your neighbor. Um, equity means it being fair for all, not just for you. And just because um, you don't like what someone says, um, I've heard some mention about Facebooks and you know, I've heard people mention things about how they work. Freedom of speech is not freedom of consequence and Facebook is a private organization. And a lot of people don't recognize that. Freedom of speech is not freedom of consequence. And if you have been removed, you have to look at your actions. You have to understand how things work. And so I didn't come here to talk about those things today, but I got really passionate and I got really upset and bothered to see some people talk so casually about how they don't want things done and how this city is fine. But at the same time, I don't recognize how it feels for some of us who are new to the city and who didn't grow up in the city and who have uh, come to the city because we like parts of it, but we recognize that there are some things that can be done better. Just because something is good doesn't mean it can't be better. So I just ask that we recognize that um, there are things that we can do better in the city. There are things in which we can change. And that, um, you know, just to say recognize your racism doesn't mean that you're an overt racist, but systematic racism and institutionalized racism are definitely well and alive in the city. And there's something that we need to continuously work to address. In regards to the HREC, the HREC has received an enormous amount of feedback uh, from everything we try and do to why are we focusing on certain events instead of other, which is again, cold talk to take you away from the fact that we're doing something. They're like, well, you can't do everything. If you can't do everything, you can't do anything. And it's not a zero sum equation. We can only do so much. We are a, a group of um, volunteers and whoever said that, thank you. Did that come from you, Mayor? I didn't hear who it came from. No, oh, sir. Okay, well then I'll keep talking. I, I will wrap up though, but that was incredibly rude. It didn't come from city council and that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. It's the disrespect that comes, uh, that isn't direct, it's indirect. But my point is this, Juneteenth is a celebration of freedom. It's a celebration 
a freedom for those in the community who didn't necessarily get it first, those who got it last. And it's open to everyone and anyone who wants to come celebrate, who likes art, who likes music, who likes fun. We invite you all to come out. Uh, it won't be this energy. It'll be an energy of love, an energy of accepting, the energy of peace. And I would encourage all the city council to come out. And that is more than my time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, the next person I see, I pronounced the first name, Kayla Wright. Ms. Wright? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm here to um, just thank the council and the city for the support that has been shown for the Juneteenth celebration. Um, I've seen firsthand the work that has been done to make this a successful event. I'm extremely proud of the people who have worked to put this together. I cannot express to you how much time has been donated to our city, to the members of our city, to the community and to the surrounding community in terms of inviting everyone to come. Um, the people who are working on this, I'm sure they're not getting everything right as people do, but there is an incredible amount of love being poured into this. And, um, and, and I also wanna thank the members of the HREC for their time similarly, because the amount of love that they're pouring in to our city, despite all of the vigorous pushback that we've seen from the community um, is quite incredible. The people who are working toward this are just sincerely donating many, many, many hours to ensure that our city has an equitable space for all of its citizens. I don't understand why it comes as a surprise that that um, that there are members of our community that would be concerned about a club called the Fourth Reich Motorcycle Club. I don't understand why that comes as a surprise. Um, just driving past it is, you know, difficult for me and for my family. Um, we don't. It, it just doesn't make sense why that would be surprising that there would be members of the city that are concerned about that. Um, but regardless, um, it does seem that the continued onslaught of negativity around specifically the HREC and also in some ways around Juneteenth um, shows just in itself proof that the HREC needs to uh, continue its work here in our city. Um, I also I am also concerned about the pride flag and I wanted to voice to um, the raising of flags. I do understand the council and um, the city has concerns legally about that. And I, I can understand that. I deal with legal issues on my end too. And um, I guess what I would like to see is if it's not, if it is a legal issue and there are concerns about raising the flag, I would like to see the city do something else to support our LGBTQ plus community if it can't be specifically raising that flag, where, um, where are there some other places that we can see support in a way that helps welcome members of the community? Um, because I, I think when we do welcome any minority group, we, we end up helping other minority groups feel welcome here as well. I wanna echo the idea that Madison Heights does have a reputation specifically in this area for being racist, for being bigoted, and we, myself, members of the HREC, those working together to um, volunteer at the Juneteenth uh, celebration, um, people coming from all kinds of cities around us, we are all working towards this to, to build some progress. Yes, progress, um, which is uh, the root of progressive, but does not have to mean that we're stomping on other people. I think there's a real disconnect there in people's understanding of what that means. So I thank the council for your time and for listening. Um, and again, thank the people for, you know, putting in the work. It's not going unnoticed. Thank you. Uh, Mary Bush, good evening. The floor is yours. Good morning or good evening. Thank you very much. I'm, um, to start with, I would like to request everybody just take a deep breath, lower your shoulders and pause and take another deep breath. I've lived here for 29 years. We have um, been through many different types of upset in the city. 
But one of the things that we always remember is how human beings we are, which gives people the right to make mistakes, to learn from them, to say they're sorry, and to move on. Now, somebody stated that this was a city of progress, but not of progressives. I am how heartedly a progressive. I am a social liberal out the wazoo. I'm also a fiscal conservative, which makes me part of the other, the other part of the team here. So when it comes to things like buildings that have SS swastikas on them, I was originally quite upset by that. And I, I fought against it, called them Nazis and everything. But when our councilwoman on the HREC called in the Assistant Attorney General of Michigan and asked for advice on how we could confront the threats that we were facing in the event of that last election, the Assistant Attorney General said, it's hard to hate close up. Invite those people to the picnic and ask them to bring the ice cream. Get to know your neighbors better. Because if what you do is continue to spread bullying, cutting people off, um, you create the same flip side of the coin of, of hatred and intolerance that is the whole essence of inclusion. Does that mean I'm gonna include somebody's Nazism? No. Am I gonna include their humanity? Yes. Because if I can be a human being with them, then maybe I've got a chance of helping them to see that I'm a human being too. So with that said, last weekend was outstanding, not this past one, but the one before. I just wanna celebrate the, the Environmental Citizens Committee and the, the Bloom Project and the gardens they're putting in around the city. I'm thrilled that we're having a Juneteenth celebration. I think that's awesome to bring our city together for the month of June. I'm really excited about some of the things that are coming up over the course of the summer, the trail tunes, the, the book beats that'll be at the trail tunes. There's all kinds of wonderful things about the city, our parks, our people, our neighborhoods. But until we take a breath and remember that that's a human being over there, then we need to like, just remember that because that's what makes Madison Heights special. All right, now I wasn't gonna say anything. I've withdrawn from all my city participation and activity because I'm not feeling well. And I thought, well, I'll just sit on my hands because you know, this is what's gonna happen if I'm dead. All y'all are gonna figure it out, but I'm not dead yet. So you're gonna get my opinion until I do. So, Straighten up, fly right, treat each other decently for God's sakes, fly the damn flag for a month that won't kill anybody and try to have a decent life. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, Mary. Uh, next is Amy Lewis. Mm. Good evening, uh, City Council. Everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Um, I really didn't have anything planned tonight, but uh, after hearing a lot of people speak, and uh, thank you, Mary Bush, um, you said a lot of what I wanted to say. Uh, personally, I came out in the early 90s. I am an openly out lesbian. I've lived in the city and the country. My dad was a country boy, my mom a city girl. I've lived all over Southeast Michigan, up in the thumb and I've experienced different communities. I recently moved to Madison Heights in 2018. And this is the first place that I have discovered feels like home. And the reason why is when I was in high school, I was friends with all the different groups, different people. And throughout my life, when I came out and I didn't have a great relationship with my family in the early 90s when I came out, the gay community welcomed me in. And therefore there was one thing about the gay community when I walked into that first gay bar, there was Black, white, Latina, Asian, Middle Eastern, but there was love. People welcomed you in. And it is Pride Month. So I want to talk about a couple of things with regards to the thing, right? I'm also a citizen of a city, of a state, and a country. I feel that those flagpoles should be honored for certain things only. I understand the representation of our pride flag and what that means to our community. And I'm one of the people that back in the day, I had a pride flag in my car, like the little sticker. But 
this community is fairly welcoming compared to other communities I've lived in. And we all come at everything with bias. For example, people on the HREC see it one way and say everybody was free on Juneteenth. And I understand that and I empathize with that cause in, those, in, in the people within the Black community. At the same time, I would like everybody to recognize the gay community. I didn't have equal rights and I never felt an equal as a citizen until 2015 on June 26th. That's when I had over 1,100 rights, benefits, and privileges that many straight people have. If I had a person, my partner dying in the hospital, if it was immediate family only, I would not be able to go in and say goodbye on their last breath. I only gained those rights in 2015. But I don't believe there's any reason why we need to put the pride flag up there because everybody that I did hear speak spoke of to promote, to support. And I agree. It would be great to in this in Pride Month to show the community promoting and supporting love and not hate because that's what my community was about. So the people that are out there that are bullying and name calling and dividing people by pushing an agenda one direction or another without being empathetic and reaching out and spreading that love and building that bridge. I encourage the person on the far left that's calling people Nazis to do what I did and reach out to the FRMC. I encourage somebody that doesn't know about gay people to come and re reach out to me, have an open conversation. I encourage somebody that's never been really around African Americans or Asians in our community or the Jewish in our community or whoever, reach out, bridge the gap, talk to your neighbors. We need more love in this community. And I've seen it from a lot of different perspectives in Michigan and living around, around Michigan. Madisonites is very welcoming. We have a lot of ways to grow and we are the city of progress. But the people that are sitting and seated in certain positions, whether it's a subcommittee, a committee or city council need to realize, think about what's within your heart and what you're doing because all these people speaking up are because of it. But at the same time, if you hear what they're saying, they want more love in this city. So I think that a lot of you, if you chose to be in that position, need to reach out to the opposite end of the spectrum. And these, by the way, these are the people I will vote for in the future. Those that are going to reach out and bridge the gap in this city and think about others and empathize and realize we all have bias. We all come, come from a way of perspective and we all have to listen to others and see what might, they might be coming from. And the narcissism won't allow you to be empathetic. That's all I wanted to say tonight. And I hope you hear me out as somebody that's been out for a long time. It's not that I don't support the gay community. I do think there are other ways we can show as a community that we love each other and that we support those like me or the African-Americans or the Middle Eastern or the Jewish or the Asian or any other culture, creed, gender or whatever within the city. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I hope I didn't go over my time. Oh, thank you. Uh, last person is Mr. Dan Lee. Floor is yours, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to take the opportunity to say I didn't have I, I didn't realize the meeting was tonight and didn't sign on earlier and uh, I apologize for that but uh, I didn't hear everyone else's comments leading up to this but I just wanted to say perhaps for different reasons as the previous speaker and some of you that I've heard in the last few minutes but I would encourage city council as I did in an email which none of them saw fit to respond to uh, not to raise the pride flag I think it should be left for the American flag, which is something that hopefully we can all get behind uh, as opposed to uh, different subgroups of our community, um, each pushing their agenda and saying, we're gonna have a flag for this and a flag for that and a flag for everything else. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say was, um, I have no problem with the people in our community who are, uh, promoting the things like the pride flag as human beings. I have no problem with them as human beings. And I think that we should treat our neighbors fairly and reasonably and as human beings and kindly and all of those sorts of things. At the same time, I am very concerned with the direction city council is moving. And I think it's very intellectually and um, otherwise dishonest. Uh, last summer, Mayor Grafstein said, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna support these things because they're progressive. We're gonna pass ordinances because uh, we want to uh, support adult gay people having rights and privileges and things like that. And then they pass an ordinance and say, all right, now we're gonna, this is gonna be about children. You can't have an open, honest conversation with children, pros and cons, aside from religious beliefs about 
your choices. And then uh, they say, well, you know, this is not about an in your face sort of thing. What adults do behind closed doors is no one else's business. And now we have people pushing that we're going to fly a pride flag and proudly promote things. So it can't be both. It can't be nobody's business and everybody's business. It can't be only about adults, but we're going to pass ordinances about children. That is dishonest and that is poor leadership. And that is frankly, um, uh, abusive and horrific to not afford children the opportunity to hear even the basic pros and cons of major life decisions from parents, doctors, and people that they trust. And so for that reason and many others, I would strongly urge council not to fly the pride flag and uh, not to change their uh, policy with this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, who was it? I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Mandy. I'm not very Zoom savvy. I was trying to raise my hand, but I don't know how to do that. So I was wondering if I could get a few minutes to speak. Okay, can we, uh, John, Mr. Fleming was first. Can we have you after oh, yes. him? Most Thank definitely. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Fleming? All right, sorry about that. I was trying to find out on mute. Um, wanted to say that I, I um, about the flag issue, um, if we, if we pass this, which, um, I don't, I think that everybody should, um, have their culture, uh, represented, uh, or other societal, uh, uh, flags and stuff like that represented also. But if we do such, I, I would like to see that our city build more than one flagpole. Um, currently we only have one flagpole by the, um, the war memorial um, of our fallen soldiers there that is really not in a, um, a prime position, in my opinion. Um, you can barely see it uh, due to the trees nearby it. I think that we should build, uh, and this is just my opinion, uh, three flagpoles like the city of Hazel Park, uh, where we could fly numerous flags. <laughs> and um, and that, that way, we have the American flag, the state of Michigan, the city flag, and and other flags that are are that we have approved through resolutions and proclamations. Uh, I believe uh, to me, I I like the way that Hazel Park has their display there, um, and um, I, I think we could do something that looks just as beautiful as it does down in Hazel Park. Um, I also have an issue with the HREC. I, I am a commissioner on the HREC. I don't have the same opinion as others. Um, I, I believe that the council does have the authority and also the duty to question the HREC. Um, I found it kind of embarrassing that council, Councilwoman Rohrbach did not have uh, the budget uh, when being asked about the uh, the Juneteenth. Uh, that was later uh, the next subsequent meeting. Uh, we did have the budget presented to us and approved by the, uh, the subcommittee, uh, but it had not been out until that period of time. Um, and if maybe that we had the, the budget uh, from the Juneteenth there uh, previously, then we could have presented it to the council for the quality of life um, grant. So that's that's one thing, and I and I don't like also that our committee ha our commission has become like a political divide. Um, whereas we have some people on the commission who are who are advancing messages uh, to dislike or take uh, action against other political factions of the uh, that other even just normal citizens in our community may have. Uh, and, and I, I think that's taking away from the whole mission of the HREC. When I, when I joined the HREC, when I put in for it, uh, my vision was to work with people like Quinn and, and other people who had um, valid complaints um, and have them presented and listen to them and try to work on equality uh, and equity and, and inclusiveness in our city. But, uh, you know, the our commission has been busy working on Juneteenth. And also, um, I haven't really heard a lot of these uh, complaints yet. Uh, so I'm still waiting to hear them 
from anyone in the city. I, I, I welcome people of, of our city to come to our commission and elaborate on on uh, you know what has gone on with the race with racism and other other things that have occurred to them. Uh, any uh, any issues that they have with the inequalities of the city government uh, or anything that we can help out with. And so um, that's what I have to say today. And I appreciate it very much for the time. Thank you, um, Mandy. Yes. Hi, how are you? Good. The floor is yours. Good. Okay, first of all, I would like to say to Mark Bliss, I am so very sorry for your loss. I know that's very difficult, and I wanted to um, wish you the best during this time. No, no problem. Um, also, um, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Spoltis. Um, I'd like to start out by saying thank you to not only the mayor for all that she does for our city, but I would also like to thank all of the wonderful men and women who work hard and take part in running our wonderful city as well. My appreciation is beyond words. With that being said, I am coming to you today to discuss some concerns with one of the council members, Kim Clark to be exact. I have lived here for 40 years and I have never seen any city council member conduct themselves in such an improper manner as she does. It is my understanding that a city official is not only supposed to advocate for our city, but want our city to succeed and grow. All of the hate speech, division, trying to defund our police, spreading unnecessary lies, calling a Jewish member of our community a Nazi and calling our Jewish mayor a racist, just because she questioned the budget for the Juneteenth celebration does not fit the description of how a city council member should be conducting themselves. I fully understand the reason Kim was questioned on the budget from the information obtained from the Michigan bankruptcy courts on Kim Clark's recent bankruptcy, it clearly shows that she cannot budget not only her own finances, but the budget of our wonderful Juneteenth celebration or our rather large city budget as well. She also runs and operates a few of the Madison Heights pages. I'm not quite sure if that's something that should even be allowed or if it would be considered a conflict of interest, especially since somebody says something or replies to anybody's posts that doesn't fit her narrative, she not only deletes their comments, but she blocks them as well from the group. This is not the Kim Clark show. Freedom of speech is the very first amendment and should be taken very serious. I just don't want our city to be looked upon negatively because of one's actions. We need to all be united as one. After all, we are the city of progress. I appreciate your time and I thank you for allowing me to speak. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's another hand up, Cindy, Brendel. No? Yeah, I'm here. Um, okay. I'm, here. I'm sorry. Um, you called on me earlier and I wasn't available. I'm sorry. Um, I'm concerned about the animal control situation and the volunteers. Um, first of all, mm. it should be about the, about the animals and their best care. And when the volunteer mentioned that an animal had to wait six days to be seen with a possible head injury, that very much concerns me that we've already went beyond where we should be. We should be, I always was under the impression they took animals right to Wilson's immediately for care. Now, if that's not happening anymore, we've already got a serious problem because the animals First of all, the volunteers are there multiple times a day to take care of the animals, to make sure the place is secure. And it's not just about taking care of the animals, cleaning everything, it's about socialization so they can be the best pets possible when they get adopted. And without that socialization, um, you know, Justin doesn't have time for all that. And if there's an assistant, that is hired, they don't have time for that either because they're gonna be helping Justin do his part of the job. So the volunteers are very important for the well-being of the animals. And, you know, it's how we treat our animals. It's like, as Mahatma Gandhi said once something about, you can judge a people by how they treat their animals. And if we've got an animal with a possible head injury that had to wait six days, and I'm not sure what the reasoning was behind that, but nevertheless, I don't think that is uh, very conducive of showing compassion for another living being. And that trickles down to people. 
So I think this is a really important issue that needs to be addressed um, and find out why some of the things are happening and to rectify it regardless of the volunteers. But I do think the volunteers are very important. So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, that's everybody. So we're going to Mayor, close. Mayor Pro Tem, this is the clerk. Oh, uh, yes. Clerk. I found uh, there was, I'm sorry, I thought there was one, but there was two other emails I just wanted to read into the record. Sure. Okay. Uh, this one is from Sean Force to Mayor Gracie and Mayor's Night City Council. The events of the past year have thrown the inequities in our country into sharp relief. From historic levels of economic inequality to racial biases inherent in our justice and health care systems, to the rise in hate crimes impacting our trans, Asian, Jewish, Muslim, and bi uh, BIPOC immigrant communities, to the continued violence of native lands in the name of profit, we are faced with reckoning on a national level with how we can address our collective history and continued impact of white supremacy prejudice and systematic inequalities and find a way to move forward together truly united. It is reassuring to know that many of our institutions are finally stepping up to specifically combat white supremacy in their ranks in their approaches. The Department of Homeland Security is offering up to 2 million in targeted violence prevention grants to state and local governments, schools and nonprofits specifically to address white supremacist radicalization to violence in local community on a local community-based level. In February is a response to the January 6th riot in Washington, D.C. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin called for the stand down to confront extremism in our armed forces and combat the threat from the domestic extremists, particularly those who espouse white supremacist or white nationalist ideologies. Closer to home, state and local police departments, including our own, own Masonites PD, led by Chief Haynes, have engaged in training, self-reflection, and community outreach and engagement initiatives to counter implicit bias in their policy and procedures and to protect our communities against white supremacist violence. These government initiatives show progress and it is reassuring to know that powerful institutions in this country are taking the danger of white supremacy seriously. We know that every inch of progress we have made toward being a truly inclusive society comes from the work of the people put in year after year, decade after decade. Change has never been ma mandated from above. It's up to us always to fight for justice right here in our communities. It is up to us always to hold those in power accountable for how our dis decisions impact our lives. It is up to us always to work together to create a world we want to live in, which is why the community initiatives such as our own human rights and equity, I'm sorry, Human Relations and Equity Commission, the Madison Heights Food Pantry, Madison Heights Citizens United, Madison Heights Anti-Racism Coalition, and the Madison Heights Mutual Aid Network are so important. Working on a local level to address inequalities, feed, educate, and support each other, and combat racism ableism, homophobia, and xenophobia in our community is how we build a world worth living for all of us. Our upcoming Juneteenth event, unanimously supported by both by the HREC and City Council and funded and staffed fully by no donations of volunteers, is just one example of the work we we're doing in Mason Heights to address the short-sightedness of the Eurocentric buyers around our collective history. I hope this council and our neighbors will join us to celebrate the work of thousands of abolitionists, the revolutionary acts of enslaved people and the union soldiers of all races to begin to extend the great American promise to all citizens of this country. The Human Relations and Equity Commission also has an accessibility subcommittee. We are planning a community needs assessment to collect data to drive further community mm -hmm. initiatives and fund grants around issues of accessibility in our city. Our, concert, our conversations with our neighbors and community stakeholders have revealed a wealth of passionate, educated, and well-versed individuals and advocates that will truly make Madison Heights a city of progress. They have also revealed economic barriers to civic participation and stable, safe living here in Madison Heights, physical barriers for our disabled neighbors to access local parks and events, and concerns around racism, homophobia, and ableism here in our city. We are holding a special meeting of the HREC on July 21st to hear from our neighbors and community organizations regarding their experiences here in Madison Heights and where we can do better as a community to be welcoming, inclusive, and safe for all. Each of us can only view the world through our own lens and it's imperative that we listen to each other when we speak of, this, of what is harmful and what helps. I encourage anyone interested in getting on the agenda for the July 21st special meeting of the HRAC to email me at skathleenforce, that's S-K-A-T-H, L-E-E-N-F-O-R-C-E at gmail.com. 
I'd like to thank Councilor Rohrbach for her work around economic justice and addressing source of income bias in housing. I'm encouraged, I, I'd encourage this council and Mayor Gracie to visit United Way's ALICE project to learn more about economic inequality and income disparities and the realities of life for so many working class folks. You can learn more here at www.uwmich.org backslash ALICE. I'd also like to thank council member Kim Clark for advocacy for our LGBTQ plus community members. We still do not have equal rights in the state and lack specific protections around matters of housing and employment discrimination. I encourage this council and Mayor Grassian to learn more about Federal Equality Act and the Michigan Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act to pass the Human Rights Ordinance as Hazel Park and Royal had both done and vote yes on item D1 on today's agenda, allowing Pride and Juneteenth flags to be flown. I'd like to commend the mayoral appointments to the Crime Commission of Deliza Lee, Kylie Monahan, and Martha Colbert. These three women bring a wealth of experience a dedication to creating fair and equitable policy and a commitment to listening to our neighbors that will make them excellent contributors to the Crime Commission. And lastly, I would like to encourage Mayor Grafstein and our council leadership and our neighbors to continue to engage in learning and self-reflection around white supremacy and its deadly impacts on marginalized communities. Racial disparities in our schools, justice systems, healthcare, and income levels are well documented. It's also important to remember that white supremacy divides us from one another and is a tool used to instill fear and garner power in this country. We are stronger together and white supremacy weakens our communities and keeps us focused on hating the other instead of building together. For all of our sakes, we must work hard to address these issues and that includes being very aware of our own ex explicit and implicit biases and which voices we choose to empower or protect. And then I have one more that this is an email from um, SM Markey. I believe only American POW, MIA, state or city flag should be flown in any official capacity. My opinion, thanks. And that's it. Okay. Uh, oh, looks like there's one more hand up. Amy Townsend. Can you hear me? 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 There a lot of feedback there. Is that better? I think so. Oh my lord, that was this is this was an ordeal for me to get on here. <laughs> okay, so I've been a resident here in the city for over 20 years. And I'm here today as an ex shelter volunteer of two years to vocalize my displeasure. I'm getting like major feedback. Yeah, yeah there, there is. Okay. Um, if there is anyone else in your room uh, also online, maybe if they put theirs on mute, sometimes that'll give feedback if there's multiple people in the same room. Oh, there's not multiple I do devices, my... Amy. If you're on yeah. your phone and a computer, mute one. Okay, because I have my iPad, I have my iPad on. on. Yep, turn that iPad off. Turn it off. Just shut it off. Oh my goodness. Is that better? Is that better? Um, a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Do, is there something else you want to add or something different or? Um, as far as what I want to say? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm not yeah, done yet. So I was, um, I'm calling to vocalize my displeasure with the city and the chief's decision to discontinue the volunteer program at the animal shelter. Um, it's a known fact that socialization will increase an animal's chances for adoption and uh, also any animal that is not regularly let out of their kennel can end up with a condition known as kennelitis. It's actually a, a condition, you can look it up, um, which it's defined as social maladjustment towards humans as a result of being kenneled for an extended period of time without proper mental and physical stimulation, hence less chance to end up in, in homes. Um, our duties as volunteers were walking the dogs, giving them ample one-on-one -on -one playtime, cleaning kennels, feeding, and of course, lots of loving. Um, 
My hope is that the city and the chief will reconsider their decision as an animal lover. This decision does not seem to be in the best interest of the city's uh, shelter animals at all. Thank you. And that's what I have to say. I, I don't know if you heard me repeated 50 times, but. That's thank okay. You. Thank you. Uh, last person is um, POS. Amy, I think that's still on. Yeah. Okay, so we have POS iPhone. Hello, I think that's me. Okay, yes. My name is Loretta Hayes. And I had sent a letter to the clerk to be read. And I had also sent a email to Councilman Corbett. And I would like for those to be acknowledged, please. I think the clerk already read the one. Is that correct? Uh, not for me, no. Okay, um, let me check real quick. Sorry about that. I had so many today. Yeah, I know you did. Mine was written right after the last council meeting. Do you want to start with what else you said? You had some other things you wanted to add? Um, yes, I had also emailed uh, Councilman Corbett um, about some concerns, and I would like to have that acknowledged. I do, I do have your email if you'd like me to read it. Yes, please. Okay. Um, it says, yeah, please, let's see here. One second, I didn't go to the first one. <laughs> okay, I'm wait, writing today to express my support for Mark. No, wait. no, wait. no, 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 wrong one. You know what? I didn't get the, I want to put your name in my email. Sorry about this. I don't have anything from this year. I, I don't know if maybe it went to my spam. But Mr. Mr. Mayor, I was just going to say, I don't, Loretta, I've, I've gotten stuff from you definitely in the past. I don't recall anything in the last two weeks. Well, okay, I can resend them to you. Please. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, I think we're going to close uh, open to the public. Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Bliss. I uh, just wonder if we could take a quick two minute recess before moving on with the other dozen items in the agenda. Is there any objection? Any council members? Okay, so so moved. Take a two minute recess at, uh, so it's 9, 11, um, 12, 13, 9, 13, we'll be back. Thank you. Oh.
Okay, I think uh, we'll be back here and start again. Um, we're gonna go into communications, and uh, I talked to the city attorney. And uh, well, if if, if it's okay with council, um, if we want to combine these uh, resignations. Um, so, what is the wish of council? Your Honor, Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we accept the resignations from Amanda Stein from the HREC, Brandon Charneski from ITAC, uh, and Elizabeth Womanberg from the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, the DDA, and the Environmental Citizens Committee, uh, and issue the appropriate certification of thanks for their time. And declare the seats vacant. And declare the seats vacant. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Your Honor. Uh, I think it was Mr. Corbett. Uh, support, sir. Okay, so we have a, um, a motion to accept the resignations of Amanda Stein, Brandon Charneski, and Elizabeth Bloomberg, um, and second by Councilman Corbett. Uh, City Clerk, can you uh, do a roll call, please? Yes. yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Mayor, Sol Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? Yes, and so it is passed. Uh, I'd like to ask the, well, if we can do it with the, uh, and we're gonna go into D reports or the resolution for the placement of flags. Uh, City Attorney, is that okay to do the same? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. We need to just do D1 by itself first. Okay, so we'll do uh, the resolution um, up next then is under D1, the resolution for external flag policy. Uh, the city manager, Marsh, do you have a report, please? Yes, at the council members, Clark and Rohrbeck, city council is being requested to consider an external flag policy for flags presented in front of city hall building. Currently, the city policy is to allow the United States flag the state of Michigan's flag, the city of Madison Heights flag, and the POW MIA flag on Veterans Day and Memorial Day only. This resolution would amend this policy, allowing other flags to be tempor temporarily presented outside the city of Madison Heights City Hall building upon the issuance of a resolution adopted by council. All flags allowed outside the city of Madison Heights City Hall building would be displayed for a period of not to exceed 30 days or one month, whichever is longer. Thank you. Uh, what is the wish of council? Your Honor. Um, Councilwoman Clark. I, we, I move that we 
Melissa, can you help me with the language here? Approve the resolutions um, to change the policy to allow us to display exterior placement of flags on City Hall. Is that, will that work? That'll do it. Yeah, to, adopt, good. Yeah, to adopt the resolution for exterior placement of flags as presented. That, those words, those are the ones I want you to use. <laughs> okay. All right, so there's a motion uh, to uh, approve Councilwoman Clark. Is there a second? Your Honor. Councilor Rohrbeck. I will okay. second. Okay, so we have a motion to uh, approve uh, the resolution for an external flag policy. Um, motion made by Councilwoman Clark and second by Councilor Rohrbeck. Uh, City Clerk, can you do a roll call vote? Your Mayor. Uh, oh. City Manager, uh, excuse me, City Attorney. Discussion on the motion first. Pardon me? Discussion on the motion. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Disca is there any discussion? Thank you. Your Honor. Councilwoman Clark. I, I would like to speak a little bit about this. I think it's an exciting opportunity for us um, to be changing a policy, especially in the spirit of human equity. Um, and I hear a lot of residents bring concerns like, well, then we might have to fly other flags. And to which I say, I think it would be great for us to fly other flags that celebrate marginalized communities. Um, and I think it's a really a great step in the right direction for the city to be able to do that. I see um, a lot of the concern around the legal aspects are like, well, if we do that, we have to allow everyone. You'll see it still has to be approved um, by resolution by city council in order to do that. Um, and also there are cities all over the nation adopting the pride flag and even Oakland County itself is now flying the pride flag in front of its building. And I think that it goes to show a lot of progress is being made on how we celebrate humans. And I think it's important um, that our city surrounded by cities that are supporting, supporting the LGBTQ plus community by flying a pride flag that we can do that too, that we can show our community. And I've learned um, just over the past few years of trying to get this on the agenda this will be my third year trying to get it on the agenda. My first year that I was able to get at least one other council person support in order to get on the agenda. I was not able to get support from anyone else on council in the years prior. So I think it is, um, I think it's worth stating that I think that city council is ready to move forward um, uh, in our policies and start accepting more people and showing people who enter our community who maybe aren't from here, how accepting we are. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing there's none. Your Honor. Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. Yeah, so just a couple of quick things. Um, to, to me, support for the flag is not necessarily any different than the resolutions that this council has unanimously passed over the past couple of years. Um, it's interesting because it's like, I'm not sure about the, the headline here and, and the discussion as it was presented in the report, but I don't see this as necessarily a change to policy. Uh, I could be wrong. You know, I've, I've been around here a little while and, and I think we've got a decades old track record of flying flags for causes on city buildings. You know, that's already there, it's already existing. Uh, there have been flags fly, flown that were not just the US flag and so the uh, I mean, I suppose a, a change to policy would be if we were saying no other flags would fly. Uh, we also do the similar thing around the holidays where we honor multiple religions outside of City Hall, uh, where we don't, we don't necessarily say, you know, no religions, but we are inclusive and we want to make sure that, you know, the holiday season is well represented across. And so I think, you know, this is pretty, I, I think, in, in tying in with our historic, with our with our historical track record there, and you know, as was noted, there's not a we're not the first city around us to do this. With all that said, council needs to understand the risk here. You know, uh, Councilwoman Clark noted in her comments that the city council has to pass the resolution for the flag to fly, which is absolutely correct, but. If council ever didn't pass something, I believe that we could be sued. So we just need to understand that that risk. Um, if we don't pass something, there is that potential. Uh, I was in a planning commission meeting a few years ago, and uh, we discussed in detail Supreme Court rulings 
that stop the city from regulating the content of any sign. Uh, we can regulate the size, we can regulate the placement, we can regulate all that stuff, but we cannot regulate what's on the sign. Uh, and so we had to change our entire sign ordinance based on that Supreme Court ruling. Uh, I assume that that ties in here and I'll, I'll let legal counsel uh, to elaborate if they'd like, uh, but that means that as other causes are brought up, uh, even if council declines to pass the resolution, it's very possible that a court may force us to be able to raise that flag. And so uh, council members need to be aware of that. Uh, unless I'm wrong, that just needs to be uh, you know, made aware. I, I'll, I'll vote in support of this because I think it's important that we do it. Uh, but it's something our legal counsel needs to con continuously stay on top of. And it's not something that we, we do with our eyes closed to the potential risk. It's something we just have to be made aware uh, and understand fully what could happen down the road that might make us change this policy that we're adopting tonight. Okay, thank you. Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor. Mr. Corbett. We, we all kind of draw our own lines where we like to, uh, how we want to see history uh, get quoted back to us. Uh, Ms. Clark a minute ago talked about three years ago, the work she's been doing on this. 12 years ago, then Councilman Hartwell and myself, I think it was 12, 13 years ago, couldn't even get a third vote for a, uh, a resolution, a human rights resolution, let alone uh, a flag or a, a, you know, a festival or a sentiment or a parade or a march. So I think we, we stand this evening at the, uh, at the edge of, uh, of a change, of a progress for the community and for ourselves and our relationship with the marginalized groups that, that were spoken of. Um, I, think, I think that uh, Mr. Bliss is correct. I think there are some risks involved here. And I think at, at some, some point we may want to circle back and take a look at this policy again. Um, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, there's, there's a real tendency these days to talk about, well, we're just going to change things because they've just been there so long. Well, you know, everybody didn't just fall off the turnip truck. We have all gone through these uh, trials before, and it's, it's fine uh, when it's, it's something that we're proud of. And this evening, we're proud of our relationship with uh, the gay community. Uh, we're proud of where we're going in that direction with this flag. Um, but are we going to be that proud later on when somebody else that we don't like uh, comes in and, 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 and starts to spread hate or a negative kind of a, uh, uh, a negative kind of an influence in our community? It would be a little tougher for us to, to look up and say, well, well, that's one view we don't include. Obviously, I hope we keep our moral compass straight through all of this. Uh, and we continue to, to, to hold, uh, hold firm to what we believe as a community. Um, but moving forward, um, I, think that, I think this is a good, good thing this evening. I think we support a lot of groups within our community, uh, some on the basis of sexual orientation, some on the basis of racial or ethnic uh, grounds. The, that's just who we are. We're, that's the kind of community we're striving to become. So I'll, I'll happily uh, uh, agree to, to vote with this. I think it's the next step. I think it's where we need to be. And uh, I just, um, I think we just need to make sure that our tent stays open and includes a lot of people and all the different groups that step forward. That's all I have, sir. Thank you, sir. Your Honor. Yeah. Councilor Ro Roerbeck, yes. Yes. Um, I want to say a couple things. One is, um, you know, when I ran for city council in 2019, um, one of the things I told people is I want this to be a great place. I want Madison Heights to be a great place to raise a family because I'm raising my family here. And I know that so many mothers and fathers are raising their children here and they want their children to know that they are loved and supported by their community. And this is one thing that we can do as a city to show the support for our beautiful children, no matter what they are, where they are in their lives and what their orientation is, what their gender identity is. It doesn't matter. My children have come home this month, this, this month from school and they've been talking about pride at school and it, it has, they are celebrating it. They, they are seven and nine years old and they're there and they say, 
we know that it doesn't matter who people love because they love and love is what matters. And I think that, um, you know, flying this flag is, is a way to show that we are inclusive and welcoming to a historically marginalized community that is, this is a completely um, necessary way for us to, to move forward. I appreciate Mr. Um, Mr. Bliss's comment about, you know, going into this with eyes open. We're not just doing things because it's fun. Like <laughs> this is not a simply a, a, a fun and exciting bandwagon to jump on. This is about, you know, in, in many ways, you saving kids' lives. People, the, the folks in the LGBTQ plus community have such a higher rate of suicide that it is heartbreaking. And if we can do one thing to save a child's life, if we could fly a flag to say you are worthy and important and we love you as a city as a community that we support you then I believe that we should do it um I want to say that you know it's not pie right just because we are creating and, 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 and making available more equity to and more recognition to a group that has been traditionally marginalized does not mean you're taking away um, something from somebody else. You're hoping to lift people up who have been held down for far too long. It's not pie. <laughs> it's not gonna run out, right? So I will be voting um, enthusiastically in favor of this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Well, I, for one, um, are going to vote for this, um, not only for the residents in Madison Heights, but my uh, my daughter, who uh, came out as uh, gay, you know, when she was, uh, I think, a senior in high school. And so I saw the, the trials and tribulations and the challenges that, you know, she faced and her friends. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm proud that the uh, that we're, uh, we're doing this and um, I appreciate uh, everybody's support. Okay, so can we have a roll call, please? Um, Councilman Corbett. Sorry about Sorry. that, yes. Okay. Um, Councilman Gettings. Yes. Councilman Rohrbach. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Solpus? Yes. Okay. Um, city Manager, uh, if we can combine the two, can do you have a report for the resolution for displaying the pride flag and a resolution uh, displaying the Juneteenth flag? You're on mute. We have a resolution to fly the pride flag for the remainder of the month of June. However, the city needs a, flag, a pride flag to start displaying tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm going to have to order it. Um, and then the Juneteenth flag to be displayed from June the 18th to June the 21st. OK, uh, what is the wish? Well, any discussion? There's a question. <laughs> I move yes. that uh, city council uh, 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 approves the flying of the pride flag outside of city of Medicine Heights city hall for the remainder of June. Are you making a motion also about Juneteenth? We're taking yeah, we're, them. Oh, we're doing them both together. And exactly. that uh, we uh, display the Juneteenth flag outside of the city of Madison Heights building from June 18th to June 21st, 2021. Thank you. Is there support? I support. Okay, so we have a motion from uh, Council Rohrbeck and a second from Councilwoman Clark to uh, resolution to display the pride flag and resolution to display Juneteenth flag. Um, any discussion? Yeah. Uh, Councilwoman Clark. Um, 
as a bisexual member of council and the mother to two uh, LGBTQ children um, and to have a husband and another child as an ally, I am and to have listened to so many neighbors over the past few years talk about how important it is to do this. I just want to say thank you to everyone for your support tonight on this. It's extremely, extremely important and I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, we appreciate your passion and uh, commitment to this. Uh, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing that there is none, can we have a roll call vote? Clerk, please. Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman, Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? Yes. So it uh, passes. Okay. Um, we have um, an on the agenda, item E, items for future public hearings, there are none. Then we'll go down to F, which is bid awards and purchases. Uh, I hope that we can combine all of them. There's F1 through F2, three, four, five. And see, so it's the F1 purchases um, are, are in a bid awards amendment to the professional services agreement between the city of Madison Heights and Safe Bill. Uh, city manager Marsh, do you have a report, please? Yes, the City of Madison Heights is currently in an agreement with SafeBuilt to provide building inspection services. Staff is recommending to amend this agreement to also include the part-time code enforcement services only, not the full-time. Um, we budgeted a part-time code enforcement position for several years now. We've had very little success recruiting and retaining anyone in this position long-term. The part-time position would work approximately 20 hours a week to assist a full-time code enforcement officer. Um, so staff and I recommend the approval of this amendment with safe built for part-time code enforcement services. Okay. Does that cover all of them? No, that's just F1. Okay, and then after that, we'll do combine the others? Um, we could ask if council wants to pull out any of those and, and approve them like a consent if you wanted to, um, yes. but that would require council to because there could be discussion on some of these purchases. So what, what's the wish of council on this matter? Ms. Mr. Mayor, for the moment, just to, to save you some uh, grief in a second, uh, I'm going to move to approve F1 as recommended by staff, which is the uh, agreement for, what's the period of time, Melissa, one or two years? I'm sorry. I it doesn't say, but it is, I think two years. Let me look it up. This is the exciting part of government. <laughs> it continues until we count until we cancel it, it appears. On an ongoing basis, then, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, is there a second? Your Your Honor. Pro Tem. Oh, Mr. Gettings. Yes, sir. I'll second the motion. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilman Corbett, second by Councilman Gettings. Uh, any discussion? No? Okay, and seeing none, uh, can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Um, Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Mayor Potem Soltis? Yes. So uh, that passes F1. And so were we gonna combine the rest or no? No, I don't think so. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, so F2, uh, purchase, um, excuse me, F2, the city manager, do you have a report please? 
Yes, this is the purchase of one 2021 Dodge Durango Pursuit vehicle for the police department. Council is being requested to consider approving the purchase of the 2020 Dodge Durango Pursuit vehicle for the replacement of a recently totaled vehicle 113 from Galliana. Um, oh, you're out, you got cut out. Can you hear me now? Yes like a Verizon commercial. The unit is uh, 35,292. Um, funds for 33,500 of the lost vehicle were recovered from the MMRMA, that's our insurance company. Um, the cost of the upfit of the vehicle is 12,618.73 and is also covered by the MMRMA. Staff and I are recommending city council approve this purchase from of a one Dodge Durango from Gally Anna Van Dyke Dodge through the Oakland County Purchasing cooperative not to exceed thirty five thousand two ninety two. Okay, thank you. What's the wish of council, Mr. Pro Tem, sir? Oh. Mr. Corbett, uh, I would move the council concur with the recommendation of staff and approve the purchase of one Durango Pursuit vehicle from Galliana Van Dyke Dodge through the Oakland County Purchasing Cooperative for an amount not to exceed thirty five thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars. Thank you, sir. Support? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. I second. Okay, so we have a motion um, by Councilman Corbett and second by Councilman Bliss. Um, any discussion? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Mr. Gettings. Just a side note, if you will, um, not trying to be funny, but I had a Durango for about seven years and a couple of my buddies called it the Batmobile. But my point being, it was a very good vehicle. I sold it with 70,000 on there and I really had no trouble with that vehicle whatsoever. So I think it's a great move on our part. Thank you, sir. No, thank you, Mr. Gettings. I, I long time ago, I used to sell uh, Dodge Durango's and the rest of the Dodge team, so. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing there's none, can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilman Rohrbach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? Yes. Motion passes. On to F3. City Manager, do you have a report? Of security camera replacements for the police department? On April the 21st, a bid for the replacement and installation of 18 security cameras and related, related equipment was posted at City Hall and on Mitten. We, it was also emailed to 217 vendors. 12 vendors attended the mandatory pre-bid walkthrough and eight bids were received. Upon staff review of the initial bids, an additional quote for a 24 port switch was requested from the eight vendors and the grand totals and overall bid packages were reviewed by BPI IT staff and Chief Haynes to determine the lowest bidder. The lowest qualified bidder is Security Designs with a grand total of $24,908.40, including removal of existing equipment and installation of the new equipment. IT staff completed a second review of the specifications and equipment proposed and recommended awarding to security designs based upon the specifications of the equipment to be installed and prior experience with similar installations for other cities. Staff and I respectfully request that council award the contract for the police department security camera replacement to security designs in the amount of $24,908.40 based upon the unit pricing provided. Okay, what is the wish of council? Your Honor. Councilor Rohrbeck. I would request that uh, council approves the contract for the police department security cameras um, to security designs in the amount of $24,908. Thank you, is there support? Your Honor. Councilwoman Clark. I'll support. Okay, so we have a motion be made by Councilor Rohrbach, second by Councilwoman Clark. Um, is there any discussion? No, seeing none, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, Council, Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Bliss? 
Yes. Mayor Pro Tem sold us. Yes, so it passes. Okay, three down, two to go. Um, F4, do you have a uh, report, um, Ms. Marsh? Yes, in this one, the adopted budget included funding for the first phase of the parking lot. In oh, you cut out. Can you hear me now? Yes. Maybe it will help if I turn off my camera. Although maybe not, we'll see. <laughs> um, Let's see. Although general maintenance is routinely performed on the parking lot, um, the parking lots continue to degrade and currently are in fair to poor condition. Relevant to this removal of the underground storage tank and fuel island on the north side of the police department parking lot in 2015, the DPS performed repairs that were intended to only be temporary. During that period, we made the choice to eliminate the police department fueling site and eliminate that only at the DPS, requiring this area to have a more permanent fix. Um, we were going to include that in the parking lot paving um, bid, which is now being sent out in 2021. The invitation to bid for the police department project was originally issued in late summer of 2020, but all the bids came in well over budget. We put that on hold and have recently reissued the bids we reached 508 vendors, um, 66 vendors downloaded the bid. We had a pre-bid walkthrough on June the 4th. It was attended by four bidders. Nine sealed bid bids were actually received and the best asphalt, which is the name of the company, also the best bid of Romulus, Michigan was the lowest bidder for a total anticipated project cost of $134,480. Best Asphalt is a reliable firm with 50 years experience in the industry and the reference checks have been performed by our city engineers. So this is the rest of the city hall parking lot has been put on hold pending the active adult center move, but this is an area that would not be um, touched with that project. So based on these facts, staff and I recommend that city council award the police department parking lot replacement project to best asphalt of Romulus for a total of 134,480. You said the company is called best asphalt? Yes. Okay. All right, what is wish your council? Your honor. Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we uh, concur with the staff recommendation and award the Police Department parking lot replacement project to Best Asphalt of Romulus, Michigan for a total project cost that is not to exceed $134,480. Okay, is there a second? Your Honor, support the court. Sir. All right, so we have a, a motion by Councilman Bliss, second by Councilman Corbett. Any discussion? Seeing there's none, can we have a roll call vote? Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Roback? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Mayor Portem Soltis? Yes. Okay, last one, uh, F5. Uh, Ms. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes, this is the Wildwood parking lot repayment. In fiscal year 2020, the budget included the replacement of the Wildwood parking lot, which got carried forward due to COVID. These funds um, are available in the current budget. Current park improvements have included the installation of a new playground and the related concrete work, which focused on ADA, UA accessibility and compliance. And they were also partially funded by the Recreation Trust Fund grant through the DNR. The existing parking lot's in extremely poor shape. It appears to have been converted in the past from limited parallel parking to perpendicular parking, which resulted in the curb occupying the middle spaces, making them inaccessible to anything but large trucks and SUVs. Um, part of the replacement project includes removing this curb, allowing maximum utilization of the parking lot. Okay, thank you. Um, what's the wish of council? Your honor. Councilor Rohrbeck? Yep. Um, I move that we concur with the recommendation of st city staff and award the Wildwood Park parking lot replacement project to Italia Construction of Washington Township um, for a total cost of 23,909.60. Thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Well, I heard Councilwoman Clark first. I'll support. 
All right, so it's a motion made by Councillor Rohrbeck, second by Councilwoman Clark uh, for the Wildwood parking lot replacement. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Mayor, oh. Mr. Gennings, yes. Go yes, ahead. sir. Um, I don't know if Melissa Marsh uh, gave the amount, but I think it got cut out. If that means anything, Mr. Sherman. It didn't come through on my screen. It's 23909 $23,909.60. $23 I think I cut out. Thank you much. Thank you, Mr. Giddings. Your Honor. Councilor Orbeck. I just want to say um, one of the, I want to highlight that this, um, this project will help to bring our Wildwood Park um, um, towards ADA compliance, which makes this park uh, one that will be like fully um, wheelchair accessible, um, which is a goal that we need to have for all of our parks. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, we need to have it so that every child, no matter their ability, is able to access all of our parks and our green spaces. Um, and so, um, this is a beautiful park for those that have not um, been able to, to visit. It's just a wonderful park, brand new facilities. I encourage everybody to, to get out there. And I'm really excited to see that um, it will now be accessible because it is um, the way it's built. People can just, you know, roll right up to the, right up into the play structure from, from the ground up into the play structure, fully accessible and uh, making it Right now, the park the park lot is a disaster. So I'm really glad that we're going to have it, um, so that you can actually um, seamlessly go from parking lot into the play structure for all all children. Great. Any other discussion? Your Honor, I just uh, was just going to uh, concur with uh, Councillor Rohrbeck. Uh, yeah, it and in fact, it is already a, a goal of uh, of our park system to uh, to integrate uh, ADA compliance generally, whether we're talking about the playground structures that the kids are on, uh, or the accessible in. A lot of that though is dictated as we come to these projects. It, one way, who needs uh, the um, black topping or the uh, concrete now will sort of dictate somewhat the the direction of this but um but yeah no we it is our our objective is certainly uh, consoles the last two or three years now um to um to ensure compliance with these requirements anyone else all right seeing that there is no more uh, comment can we have a roll call please Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? Yes. It passes. Okay. We'll move on to G ordinances. Ordinance number 2165, City Manager Marsh. Do you have a report? I'll keep my comments very brief because I keep breaking up. Um, this ordinance 2165 is on second reading. It amends the site plan approval process. It solidifies several things that we're already get doing and makes it very clear in the definitions how the site plan review process works. Um, City Council is being requested to adopt this on second and final reading. What's the wish of Council? Your Honor. Councilwoman Clark. I'd like to move that we approve the zoning text amendment on ordinance number 2165, 21 through 01 to revise requirements for application, review, approval, and enforcement of site plans. On the second reading. On the second reading, yeah. Great. Is there a support? Your Honor. Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Bliss. I second. Okay, so we have a motion made by Councilwoman Clark, seconded by Mr. Bliss uh, to approve the zoning amendment on second read. Um, any discussion? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. Uh, just a, a really quick comment here to, to thank the, the staff and, and the Planning Commission. Uh, you're seeing so many of these uh, amendments coming up because the Planning Commission has decided along with staff that uh, instead of meeting 
uh, like we used to every couple of months, uh, we're jamming in at least one meeting every month. And, you know, they are two to three times as long as they ever have been, because we're trying to clean up a lot of this language to be able to make the city, you know, as desirable as possible uh, to anyone looking to make an economic investment. And so I just want to uh, appreciate and thank you know, all of those volunteers serving on that board, dedicating their time, uh, as well as the hard work of our staff uh, to be able to clean up some of this language, as was mentioned uh, by the city manager. Uh, it's kind of thankless work, but there's so many I's to dot and T's to cross uh, that, you know, I'm very appreciative that we have so many great people working on that. Good point, sir. Anybody else? Seeing there is none. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mm. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Mayor Potem Soltis? Yes. And this passes. Uh, ordinance number 2165. Okay, so last ordinance, 2166. Uh, City Manager Marsh, do you have a report, please? Yes, this ordinance focuses on revising the maximum permissible height in the RM multifamily district, B1, B2, and B3 zoning districts. Um, this is on the second reading. And this proposed amendment primarily addresses the building heights by extending the maximum heights for those principal structures by 10 feet or one story. The amendment also updates the general standards for rooftop screening. Um, if council has any questions, I can elaborate, but again, just kind of keeping the comments short. Thank you. Um, what's the wish of council? Uh, Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we adopt ordinance number 2166 on first reading. Okay. Any on second. I think that maybe the top sheet might be wrong. It's on it second and final second. reading. Second and final. Okay, yeah, the top sheet is wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I will amend to uh, have it be the second and final reading. Great, is there support? Your Honor. Mr. Corbett. S support, sir. All right, support. So we have a motion by Mr. Bliss, uh, second by Mr. M Mr. Corbett. Any discussion? Seeing there is none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis? Yes, it passes. Okay, so now we're on to unfinished business. Um, we need a motion to remove, or excuse me, yeah, remove from the table the call of projects for 2021. Your Honor, so Mayor, so moved. So moved. Se second? Mr. Bliss? Your Honor. Oh, yes. Council. Okay, so <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Second. So uh, motion made by uh, Councilman Corbett, second by Mr. Bliss. Uh, any discussion? Seeing, seeing there is none, uh, roll call vote, please. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Soltis. Yes, motion, motion passed. Second is item H1, uh, call for project, projects 2021 tabled from the May 24th, 2021 regular council meeting. Uh, City Manager Marsh, do you have a report? I was planning on reading the report just to refresh everybody's memory, but um, I guess I would just ask now if council needs me to do that, wants me to do that. If not, you can just move to vote. I don't see anyone shaking their head yes, so we could just move on. All right, thank you for the report. Um, hey, uh, what's the wish of council? Your Honor. Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. No. Uh, I move, oh. sorry, uh, Your Honor, I move that we adopt uh, the call for projects uh, as recommend, when the amounts as recommended and detailed by staff. And I believe that we're also gonna need a second, is it a second vote? to disperse the money or is yes. it all in one vote? Yes. Okay. It's a second so vote I, for the appropriations. Okay, so on the first vote, I, I will recommend that we uh, adopt it as recommended by staff. Okay, second. Your Honor. Ms. Clark. I'll support. 
Okay, so we have a motion made by Councilman um, Bliss, second by Councilwoman Clark. Any discussion? Seeing none, there Your is Honor? not. Oh, Mr. Bliss. Sorry, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I, I want to jump in. And I, I know, you know, I wasn't at the last meeting where this was discussed and tabled. Uh, and so I just wanted to, to comment on a couple of things that I heard when I was watching the playback. Uh, this to me, you know, when, when I first proposed this in, uh, gosh, it's like early 2019, March or April, um, the, the entire concept was wherever we could find small budget savings, the best way to use that money would be to use it for our quality of life boards to do things that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. You know, we've had we've had a lot of great work from volunteers from those boards. We have murals entirely paid for uh, by uh, fundraising. Um, you know, same thing with you know festivals like Trail Tunes. But we also have needs that we can't get to with volunteers that we can't get to with fundraising. Uh, and to be able to spend a little bit of money, uh, like what we did in in the last time in the last round of this, you know, we were able to buy things for our library that actually helped during the pandemic. We were able to buy equipment that we otherwise wouldn't have bought. Uh, we were able to uh, put you know, a ground mural in Civic Center Park that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. And so I'm really thankful for this program. And I think it, it matters a lot because the boards themselves vote and have a say and are able to help us to direct that money. Now, there were two other points that, that I wanted to hit on just really quickly from the last meeting. The first was that the money was not carried over from the last time, uh, which is contrary to what I had been hearing for some of the arts board projects uh, that were in escrow. Um, I was told that that money was there, was carried over. And if that's not the case, uh, I'm even more gung-ho about us to be able to adopt this today because council voted to allocate that money. You know, we voted unanimously as a council to allocate that money and COVID absolutely happened. And I understand that that put a lot of things on pause, but you know, the groups themselves and council didn't get to go back and say, well, let's reallocate it in somewhere else. Uh, and so I do wanna make sure that, you know, at minimum we move forward with these requests. Uh, and then I do wanna take a look at you know, how we might be able to achieve some of the things. I, I know it was mentioned the last week that there might be some grants available and creative ways to do it to accomplish some of the, the ones, the projects from last year that it doesn't sound like we have the money for right now. Uh, and the other thing that was brought up is, you know, the fact that this does have to, to come up with a budget amendment and we're doing it effectively call it a month and a half ahead of schedule because we don't necessarily know what savings that are going to come up. Uh, and anybody who's who's watched a single budget meeting over you know the I guess seven and a half years that I've been on council knows that I'm I'm very 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 fiscally conscious. In fact, this entire call for projects came when I found about you know call it six or seven thousand that I didn't think that we should be spending, and I wanted to reallocate it here. And so when I say that I'm confident that our city staff will be able to find these savings you know, I'm very confident that they're going to be able to do that. And if not, we'll make adjustments elsewhere in the next fiscal year. But I think it's important that if we're going to do this, we make sure that some of the projects that are up here, like, you know, assistance for Juneteenth and the library boards program that they want to run during the Trail Tunes Festival, have enough time and are able to you know, put that into those festivals for this year instead of carrying over into next year. Um, because frankly, I think it's important for us to do those types of events given the amount that was taken away from, from our residents over COVID. You know, we don't have a fireworks. So let's make sure that the, you know, individual events that we do have are as good as they possibly can. And you know what, if a couple thousand dollars that we can find from budget savings is gonna make those events better for our residents, I'm 100% for it. And I'm thankful for every volunteer on each of the city boards that helped to debate and put together these, uh, you know, I guess requests that went in through staff. And I appreciate staff's time to uh, 
put these together and give us recommendations that we can actually move forward with. So I'm an enthusiastic supporter. And I think that if anything we have to figure out on the back end of this, I'm very confident in staff and in council's ability to get that done. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Any other discussion? Seeing there is none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Um, Councilman Corbett. Yes. Okay. Councilman Gettings. Yes. Councilor Rohrbach. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Soltis. Yes. Motion passes. Appropriations passes. Okay. So now we're on to the minutes of the regular city council meeting. Uh, is there a motion? Your Honor, to I think we need a. Oop. Your Honor, I think we need a second one to. Uh, move move the money if i'm uh, oh i'm correct. sorry we skipped yes. over that all right so um the call for projections 20 yeah do we have a um a motion to uh for the appropriations your honor councilwoman clark i'd like to make the motion to appropriate the funds um for the quality of life projects for in the events grant is there a second mr mayor mr corbin support, support. Okay, so we have a motion from Councilwoman Clark supported by Councilman uh, Corbett. Um, any discussion? Just a reminder that it takes a super majority vote of council, so that's five. So we need five. Okay. Give me a roll call vote. Councilman Gettings. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Rohrbach. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Portem Soltis. Yes. So it's so moved past. Okay, now we can go on to the minutes of the, the regular city council meeting. <clears throat> can I have a motion to approve uh, the minutes for 524-2021, please? Your Honor. Councilwoman Clark. I'd like to move that we approve the regular city council meeting minutes of 524-2021. Okay, is there a motion or second? Your Honor. Councilor Rohrbeck. Oh, second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve by uh, to pass the 524-21 minutes from Councilwoman Clark and second by Councilor Rohrbeck. Uh, any discussion? No, can we have a roll call please? Councilor Rohrbeck. Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Councilman Gettings? Yes. Mayor Potem Soltis? Yes. And it moves uh, so fast. Okay. So appreciate everybody's uh, attention, tenacity. We're going to our round robin traditional. Um, we'll start with uh, Councilman Corbett. Nothing this evening, sir. Words of uh, magic to your ears. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Bliss? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I have a few things. I, I'll try not to take too long, but uh, you know, I want to start off by thanking everybody who participated in public comments today. Um, it was awesome to see so many people sharing their, their thoughts, their comments, their personal experiences with us. Uh, it means a lot. And yeah, I know you know, there's, there's a discussion as to, you know, Zoom versus in person. I am so thankful that our, our citizens, you know, they come out in person when we're talking about big issues and, you know, they come out on Zoom. Uh, you know, I so appreciate that our community stays engaged and it, it's really impactful to each of us uh, as we, you know, look to, you know, make our decisions and, and voice our opinions and, and our votes to be able to hear from you. So really appreciative of that. Uh, I'm also really excited and I want to promote the, the fact that Trail Tunes uh, is up for the MML Community Excellence Award. If you haven't seen it on the city's website or Facebook or anything yet, um, the voting days are, are running out. There's only a couple days left for you to vote to be able to uh, pick Trail Tunes as your favorite. Um, you know, this is a really important award because I think, at least for me, it signifies to all of the other communities in the state that, you know, Madison Heights didn't let the music die. 
in our city. We did something different during COVID. We did something safe and we found a way to be able to bring people together in the middle of the pandemic in a way that you know was possible. And I think it's something that not only did we learn from and were able to you know emulate in other events, uh, but I think it's something that you know other cities can learn from, and not just during pandemic times. But I think it's important for us to pay more attention to the goals and our vision of what we'd want to accomplish as opposed to you know, all of the hurdles and obstacles in our way. And Trail Tunes for me was a perfect example of that. Uh, and so if you could take the 30 seconds to, to click on the link and, and vote, um, you know, heck, take another 30 seconds more and post it to your social media and ask everybody you know to do the same. Uh, it would be incredibly awesome. And I know, you know, you know from myself and, and the rest of the arts board, I know we would appreciate it. Uh, next, I, I do. I do want to say, like, I'm, I'm in North Carolina for for a week right now, and you know, first and foremost, I I appreciate with everybody dealing with all of my spotty uh, mountain internet, um, but I really, it was important for me to be here. Um, I, I needed to thank everybody. The outpouring of love and support from this community after the death of my father, Tony Bliss, uh, has been more than I could have ever imagined. You know, my dad was an amazing man. You know, he was, <laughs> I keep saying like he was, he was a superhero to me. Um, you know, as a little kid, I always thought he was a superhero, but when I grew up, I realized that, you know, he really was. Uh, and, you know, it's really interesting when, you know, the whole community is, is grieving with you. Uh, you understand a lot more of the presence of the man who I called dad, uh, who volunteered almost five decades, five individual decades to make this city great. Uh, and honestly, I I wouldn't be here on council. I wouldn't be sitting in this seat if if it weren't for him showing me how much community matters and 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 how how much you can make a difference as one person if you just commit to it and 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 invest your time and invest your energy. And as much as I'd give anything for another 10 seconds with him to, you know, wrap my arms around him and tell him I love him one more time. Uh, I'm also really incredibly grateful for the way that he lived his life, for all of the people that he impacted. And I, I, hope, I hope that his passing can serve as a, a inspiration to the next group of volunteers in the city who are ready to invest five decades of their lives into making our little corner of the world just a little bit better off. And so, you know, thank you so much, every member of council, all of the department heads and city staff, every resident who's reached out to me and my family uh, from the bottom of our hearts. We are so appreciative and thankful for, for each and every one of you. Uh, you made a really difficult time a little bit better. Uh, and for that, I will be forever indebted to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Councilor Warback, please. Um, first, I want to start by saying, uh, Mr. Bliss, welcome back. And, um, you know, you, you know that my sympathies are with you. I truly believe that, uh, you know, you've made your father very proud and, um, you know, you will continue to do so. So um, I'm going to make my comments really short. I know I always talk a little bit too much. So, um, but tonight I just want to say I'm excited about the um, the pride flag being able to be lifted. I'm hoping city manager Marsh, um, um, I believe that a few people have offered um, to donate the flag. So um, if there, if we can, um, if we want to connect later, we can make sure that you can get your hands on that uh, donated flag so that it can go up. And I'm hoping that we will be able to have um, some kind of ceremony um, that uh, anybody in the public can attend when we are lifting that. So, um, but it's you know also of the essence to get it done sooner rather than later. So um, I look forward to doing that soon. Um, and then, uh, I also want to note that we had our native plant sale last week um, and uh, Crystal Fox, who is here tonight, um, she organized the whole thing for the Environmental Citizens Committee and the Bloom Project. And I just have to say um, the event raised um, 
I don't know what the net amount is, but the gross was well over $5,000. And that's going towards um, planting pollinator and native gardens here in our city, which is really remarkable. It's a very, it's a big, you can do a lot of garden <laughs> for that. So I'm pretty excited. So thank you, Crystal, for, um, for planning, executing that and helping to bring that to fruition for the city. Um, I also want to finally say Juneteenth event is on Saturday. Um, so many people are working hard to make it happen. Uh, I've said before, I'm like super stoked about the Brazil Dinar Corral. I'm really excited about the rib contest. I'm really excited about so many aspects of this, but particularly about the educational aspect. Um, there's going to be an opportunity for everybody who attends to learn more about Juneteenth and what it means um, to us as a, as a nation. Um, you know, the, it is this end, the celebration of the end of slavery for all, right? So the slavery was supposed to end years before, but there is this group of people that just still didn't know that it was over. And, um, you know, it's a dark and terrible part of our history. And it is a moment where we can say we changed, you know, the, the decision was to change and to make a difference and recognizing that when there's challenges and things that are not right, that we shine a light on it and say, this is not right, we should change. And then, then you can change, but until you speak it, until you recognize it, you cannot change. And so um, I am really excited about the celebration of change or the celebration of freedom for all here in our city. Um, uh, I'm really grateful to um, the folks who have been putting together all of the various groups that our uh, quality of life boards are doing um, tables and activities to participate. Um, I had a person create a Plinko board this week out of, you know, sheer genius and uh, wood. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. So anyway, just come by uh, Juneteenth, come, um, come celebrate with us. There's going to be a wonderful celebration and I hope everyone uh, will come and join us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sherman. A couple of quick things, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I would echo the, the sentiments of Councillor Rohrbach as it pertains to uh, Councilman Bliss that uh, your dad, Mark, would have been so proud of your service. Um, there's no question about it. And, and you're dedicating yourself to the city like you did. Um, secondly, condolences to the family of former councilwoman Marjean Scott, who lost her husband, Jack, last week. Um, um, anyone, J Jack, with all the hate and vitriol we have to deal with in our, in our country, Jack Scott was the antithesis of that because you couldn't find a kinder and more gentler soul. Uh, anyone wishing to honor the memory of Jack Scott can write a check to the city of Madison Heights, which will be used to support our heritage rooms, which was a pet project of, of Jack and Marjean. Uh, Jack and Marjean are also the originators of, of Random Acts of Kindness Week because of something that happened to them in the mid nineties where they, they, they want people to pay it forward. And that's a lasting legacy for both of them. Um, lastly, uh, kudos to Mayor Pro Tem Soltis on handling this longer than normal meeting. And I want you to know, I am a former proud owner of a Dodge Durango as well. Yeah which was purchased from a dealership in Madison Heights and it served me well. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Uh, City Manager Marsh. Echo all the same comments and just um, to elaborate on Emily's comment, it seems like we always have the same comments to make. We must be thinking the same thing. My phone blew up after council, after council adopted the pride flag. Um, resolution for donations. Um, it seems most of the people are wanting to purchase the flag and donate it. So if somebody already has a flag um, that they could bring, that of course would shorten the, the time that we could put it up. So I'll just leave it at that and I guess see what arrives in my office tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thank, you. thank you to everybody who has already reached out with donations. All right, thank you. City Clerk, Rotman. 
Uh, just real, real quick, um, the Madison District Public Schools is having a special election on August 3rd. This will only affect, this is only for precincts one through six in the city, but you may have noticed that if you do live within those precincts in that school district, and you are on the permanent absentee application list, you have received your, you should look for your application. We mailed them last week for your absentee ballot. If you are interested in obtaining an absentee ballot and you have, and you're not already on that list, please call our office. We'd be happy to send you one or stop on in. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gennings. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mayor Pro Tem, um, echoing the same comments Jack Scott and Tony Bliss are two Hall of Famers in my book, donated many, many hours, haunted houses, heritage rooms. I could go on and on, but I know everybody would like to go home sometime. Um, I'd just like to thank Emily for honoring my request a few days ago. And lastly, i just like to say that it really is an honor to serve on this city council. We have a lot of different backgrounds, different thoughts, but I think we really do make a good team. We kick things around. We try to keep the residents first and foremost, and I really love being on this team. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Gettings. Councilwoman Clark. Yes, um, thank you. First, I wanted to just take a minute to commemorate the history that we made here tonight. Um, first, by uh, making a proclamation to designate June 19th um, as Juneteenth here in the city of Madison Heights and is gonna be supported by an annual event, but also to rename Civic Park as Emancipation Park for the day is incredible and I really, um, commend my members of council for supporting that. It's incredible. It's incredible that they'll have that we will have this moment, and it's incredible that we'll be able to raise the Juneteenth flag in order to support it. It's a huge step um, for our city. We're also commemorating the history being made by celebrating the LGBTQ plus community by raising a flag in support of them. It is something that's not been done in the city before. In the past three years, we've seen a lot of progress here in our city and that's because we've had a lot of amazing leaders. Which brings me to my next um, point. Uh, tonight, we, um, we all voted on uh, accepting the resignations from uh, three really fantastic members of our community. Um, and we didn't really talk about how painful it is to see them go because these three people are some of the biggest innovators in our city. Amanda Stein started the Madison Heights Food Pantry. Brandon and his wife have been um, available in all boards, the arts board, the tech uh, advisory committee board, and Elizabeth Blumenberg, um, who resigned from a lot of boards, is one of the most innovative human beings I have ever met. She's incredible. She has great ideas. She does her research. She's involved and we're losing her to another city. And this happens because the work that uh, you have to put in to be a leader in this community, specifically to be a leader of change, is extremely difficult. Not only is it difficult work and manual labor to do it, but we are put up against a tide of people who want nothing more than to see us not succeed. And it's extremely difficult to do our jobs when we are faced with this ongoing harassment in our lives. We lose a lot of people to that, uh, we lose a lot of people who give up because it's not worth it's not worth the trouble to put into building a great community when you have that happen to you. And I know this isn't everybody on council's experience, but I'm harassed daily through private message on Facebook, on email, on my phone, my personal phone. Um, I've had people install themselves into my lives and get to know my family and care for my children, who turned out to be gathering intel so that they could one day use it against me and give it to people who mean me harm. This has been incredibly difficult. I have two years left on city council and I'm gonna make the most of it. And I'm gonna get as much change to happen as I possibly can. And I have the support of thousands 
of neighbors who are lifting me up on a daily basis. So I'm not concerned about the progress that's being made in this community because I can see how big it's getting and I can see the momentum building and I'm really excited to see more to come. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. <clears throat> well, for me, I appreciate everyone's uh, patience as I muddled through <laughs> this uh, this uh, longest agenda in years. It's probably going to be 10:30 by the time we uh, finish up here. Um, second, I appreciate everyone's opinion. Um, I'm glad everyone was able to have the opportunity. I thought it was important that everyone had the time to, uh, even if they extended three minutes to to talk about what was on their mind. Um, you know, not sure about anyone else, but uh, I can't wait until we uh, meet in person <laughs> in July. I'm in this uh, this giant council room uh, by myself, and it's very strange, you know, because there's strange noises. But uh, I can't wait. Um, it's been over a year and a half, and um, this is the first time in a year and a half I've been in here. So I really look forward to that in July. Um, you know, third, also, I appreciate the heartfelt passion of all, all our council. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. It really is. I'm really proud to be part of this team, um, a team that speaks out for the marginalized. Um, you know, I, to me, there's so much, there's so much history uh, with this uh, in terms of marginalized um, individuals. Um, I mean, all you have to do is read I don't know if they teach it in high school. I hope they do. They talk about, you know, Jim Crow laws. That's something that's huge that people should know about. Um, the fact that the riots originally started with whites, uh, white riots in, um, I think it was, uh, first one was in, um, I think, uh, where was it? Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, against African-Americans. That was, that was the riots that had, and it was horrible scene. So I, I think, uh, and it was o Oklahoma in 1921. So please read your history, uh, understand, you know, why we, we come as a, as a group to do what we do, uh, and, and support and honor things that we do, um, because there's a lot of history with it. And there's some things that just need to be changed, um, and overdue. Uh, so I'm really proud of every, all the work that we've done. So Okay, seeing no other business before council meeting, we're going to join uh, adjourn at 1025 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>